meteorologist Dave Murray. This is a special alert to all Americans who own a vehicle with less than 200,000 miles with an auto warranty about to expire or with no warranty coverage at all. Due to a decline in the economy, CarShield is announcing a low-cost, month-to-month vehicle protection plan that is now available to the public to save any driver out-of-pocket expenses on future auto repairs. Call now to find out how you can pay almost nothing for covered auto repairs. Yes, you heard that correctly. Pay almost nothing for covered auto repairs. An open phone line has been established for all drivers to call for a free quick quote. Call 800 800- 6525241 now Drivers who are covered will not have to pay for covered repairs again. This protection plan is at an all-time low. Additionally, drivers who activate this vehicle protection today will also receive free roadside assistance, free towing, and car rental options at no additional cost. Call us for your free quick quote today. 800-652-5241. That's 800-652-5241. What do you have to lose? Call 800-652-5241. Again, 800-652-5241. This is Christina Strait with Strait Realty reminding you, why pay more than four? In 2003, we had a dream to start a real estate company that would revolutionize the real estate market. Now, 20 years later, after navigating through the many markets, ups and downs, we know exactly how to help you in this challenging time. I'm Christina Strait, owner of Strait Realty. Don't give away your hard-earned equity. Give us a call today, 314-441-4444, 314-441-all fours. And remember, why pay more than four? Straight Realty is a licensed broker in the state of Missouri. When you're approaching retirement, there are a lot of questions to answer. Do you have enough money to fund your income for life? How should you claim Social Security? And what's your plan for health care and long-term care? Hi, I'm Eric Robert, Director of Investments with the Clear Path Wealth Management Group at Stiefel and host of On the Money, Saturday mornings at 11 on 97.1 FM Talk. Don't leave your retirement to chance. It's crucial to understand and address relevant risks before you retire. Our team can help you get organized, guide you through critical retirement decisions, and create an investment portfolio designed around your needs. To schedule your free retirement plan consultation, go to clearpathinvesting.com. That's clearpathinvesting.com. Or call us at 636-695-2650. That's clearpathinvesting.com or 636-695-2650. Stiefel Nicholas and Company Incorporated, member SIPC and NYSE. If you're driving a car or truck with an expired warranty and suddenly lost your transmission or needed a full engine repair, would a $4,000 repair bill leave you stranded? I'm Danica Patrick. Don't get caught off guard with a vehicle breakdown. Choose the company I trust, Endurance. No matter the mileage, if your vehicle is less than 20 years old, Endurance offers auto protection plans for any budget. Protection on the drivetrain, electrical, transmission, AC, and more. Plus 24-7 roadside assistance and rental car reimbursement on any plan. Endurance handles everything from making the claim to paying the certified mechanic of your choice. Act now and get one full year of elite benefits, a $2,000 value free. Endurance has paid hundreds of millions in claims. Call for your fast free quote today. Call 800-296-7260. That's 800-296-7260. 800-296-7260. Don't miss the Mark Cox Morning Show Spring Bourbon Fling at Clayton Winehouse. Join me and Kim April 18th from 5.30 to 8. We'll sample Proof and Wood, RD1, Four Roses, and more. Get your tickets now before they're gone at 971talk.com slash events. This hour of the Mark Reardon Show is sponsored by Gamma Tree Experts. Your trees deserve the best care. Call Gamma Tree Experts. Mark Reardon. All the spending, all the regulating, turning off the oil and gas spigots, all these things that chickens have come on the roost. The Mark Reardon Show. You can lead a man to the presidency, but you can't make him think. He'll be gotten gains of Putin's kleptocracy. Uh, yeah. This is the Mark Reardon Show. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, a Wednesday in St. Louis, and it is a beautiful spring day. I think I can qualify this as a beautiful spring day. I mean, we're in the, I think we're in the 50s, but I kind of like this. Yeah, I like it, though. But but it's not super windy, and it's nice and sunny, so it feels 
warm. I approve of this day, so is what I'm trying <laughs> okay. to say. Fantastic. <laughs> well, because I know that we're, um, you know, we're, we're in this pattern here, and I said this the other day. I like the fact that we get a little bit of a spring, and we can maybe have the uh, the windows open during the day before you have to pop the air conditioning on like crazy, and we're not too far away from that. Well, good afternoon. We are here. we got the Hall of Famer in the room with us right now as well. Fred, how are you? I'm good. I'll tell you, it was cold this morning yes, when I was walking the dog was. at 6 a.m. It warmed up nicely. You know what? We did, Alex Rich is coming in here from Y98. He does a uh, little chat with us on a Wednesday afternoon. And he came and did some physical labor at my home this morning. <laughs> Excuse with me? You or we, for you? Well, um, <clears throat> for me mainly. Fred, <laughs> I did I did a little bit. No, we had the Cotton Taste Hardware has done That's some great right. work with us here on a uh, fertilizer program with Scott's, the Scott's Four Step. And if you go in, Chuck will give you a gift card for Cotton Taste Hardware. But Alex came over. They they delivered all the uh, the mulch and everything yesterday. So <laughs> Alex had volunteered, you might remember, I do. to do some of the physical labor. So I put him to work, and we, uh, we actually shot some video and had some fun this morning. But I bring it up because the weather, th- we were out there right around 9, 930 in the morning, and it was nice. You know, it was, it was comfortable because the sun was up and it wasn't too windy. But that wind gets going, and it's going to feel very, very different. We have a lot of stuff to cover here on a Wednesday edition. I mentioned that he's coming in in the next hour, so i got a bunch of stuff. Um, we're going to have Kilmeade on this, um, this afternoon. In fact, he's coming up pretty soon. And I think he's going to talk, Fred, about um, – I don't know if he's had him on the radio show. He's going to talk about having him on the TV show on – Saturday on One Nation, Jonathan Haidt, who has, oh, okay. and I'm, we're trying to get Jonathan right. on as well. And I want to kind of toss this idea out there. Um, Jonathan's writing about social media and how to get a hold of this stuff when it comes to kids and, you know, try to hold off on giving them cell phones, et cetera. I am terrified as a parent of a little girl that I can just feel, you know, let me give you an example. And this is, I know that I'm going to be judged for saying things like this, and I deserve to be judged. Some of this happens without dad's total approval, so mom gets involved and dad can't press the veto pen. But this thing, remember over the holidays when this thing came up with Target in these Stanley things, right? I can't even remember what the, the special. Mugs, the, yeah, the pink ones. Right. Was, it a, was it a Valentine's Day thing or was it I something think else? I so. Might have been. So that, that caught me off guard, and I think it caught a couple of us off guard because it became a news story. The deal was there are these Stanley thermoses, and they're special colors, and they're sold out. And what the hell? I mean, Stanley, what's that? That's a tool company to me. I don't even know what you're talking about. Well, then I start to hear a little bit more about Stanley's, and I don't really even know if I know what they are. But when the birthday came up for my daughter a couple of weeks ago, I heard in the background, this is where as a parent you have to get more involved, the word Stanley being tossed about. And... It was my understanding that there was the there's a young woman who used to work for um, for us. She worked for Goddard and took care of Alexa when Alexa was at Goddard. Her name is Kayla. She's great. She became we called her our part time nanny. She was never a full time nanny, but she traveled with the Reardon family. She really became close with Alexa. Well, she's a teacher now. She has a full time job. She doesn't get to see my daughter as much. We're sad about that. She really became a member of our family, but she was going to get Alexa a Stanley for her birthday. Right? Okay. I don't even know. If a couple weeks ago I could have told you what that means, like she's yeah, going to you- get you a Stanley for okay, fine. Like I, I'm hearing this in the background, great. Well, Kayla got sick and couldn't come to the birthday party, so mom got the Stanley. Kayla lives a little further away from us now, so then I realized it's like a how do you describe it? It's just like a a tumbler. Just a tumbler. Tumbler is that the word we mm-hmm. use? Right. But here's what I didn't know. So last night, Sue, this, yeah. this, and, and this is where as a parent, these things get very uncomfortable. And I will tell you, those of you who are not my age and have children again, first of all, don't do it. Uh, mm-hmm. Second of all, things are so crazy. I remember even when my um, daughter was born, the difference between my kids who are now adults, Fred, they didn't have little things that indicated when the diapers were were wet, all the color changes and all that. By the time Alexa came around, all you had right. to do is look at the color change on the diaper. Everything was high tech, right? Stroke so, of genius, by right, the way. Exactly. So evolution of technology, things things were really uh, awesome. But then as she gets older, you, you know, when my kids were her age, the iPhone was just coming out for the most part, you know? Um, came out in 2008, didn't it? Aiden was born in 2000. I think it was around 2008. So, you know, they eventually get devices like that, but not when they turn that age. It was when they were 13 or 14 years old. So last night I go to volleyball practice. She's in volleyball now. And I'm at Rockwood South Middle School, and I'm up on they're, – they're doing it in the gymnasium where there's also a stage. You know, a lot of times you have – the gym serves as the stage and the theater also. So I'm up there on the stage just because I hopped up there and all the parents were around not talking to me because I don't know them. And I'm looking, and I'm like – 
Oh, there's a Stanley. Well, there's another Stanley. And all these kids have Stanleys. It's mm-hmm. like it's there, you know, because this is what they do. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you got to keep up with the Joneses, apparently, mm-hmm. even in third grade. Now, I'm not a big fan of that. Mm-hmm. So I, I think there's problems um, for kids that way, for all of us when, when we do. Well, We've sure. all done things like this, and I'm, I'm certainly not uh, immune to it. But you start thinking about how these little items and the material items become that important at that early of an age. Yeah, that, that's... that's weird to me, right? And mm. something that needs to be, and that's what Jonathan's kind of writing about in, in his new book about uh, social media and trying to keep um, kids away from this stuff. It's not easy. I think the best advice that I've had, and this is something that, that I have to do and my wife and I have to do, is get with these other parents and say, look, here's what we're telling these kids, you're you're not getting phones because your friends aren't getting phones at this age. Correct. Until you're right, but you got to stick to that as yeah, well. Yeah, it do. And isn't the state of Florida now trying to take some? They are some laws. There, they, and uh, this is one of the things I want to talk about with Jonathan, and we may get into this with Alex as well. Now, the reality of that is they're trying to limit and put a realistic um, timestamp on when you're able to get on social media. Half the people, like I'll, I'll just be honest with you, we put my kids on Facebook pretty early. They didn't really use it, but we put a fake birthday up there because Mm -hmm. technically I think he had it to be 15 or 16. Now, in retrospect, that was probably a bad idea, but (laughs) I don't think we knew Facebook was going to be. And they never used it anyway, so it it wasn't one of those things that became an issue. But they're trying to, DeSantis, I think, just signed a law. They're trying to make sure that you have verification, age verification for social media. Not that I don't think you're a great parent, but Fred, what did you do? Um, It was a little bit more brutal than that. I can just remember when Noah, our youngest son, wanted to post something of him being able to make Legos or building Legos uh-huh. on Facebook or something. We said, yeah, no face pictures, no That's... face shots. Mm-hmm. And so he would do everything with a bag on his head. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> yeah, so he See? was sort of the These kids, yeah, that's right. they're clever, aren't they? Yeah. I like that. But anyway, I don't even know how I got on that tangent. I just thought I'd talk about Stanley's there and the importance of these things to kids. Here's something I didn't know about Stanley's. Uh, did you know, Fred, I'll ask you this. So it's one thing that you have the Stanley, right? And she brings it to school every day, and she drinks her water, and she had a volleyball. But they have these little toppers. Do you know what I'm talking about or not? No. Okay. Neither did I. On the straw part on the top of the Stanley, like where you cover it up, there are these little, uh, they make all kinds of different colors and characters. You could have a dog. You could have a cat. You put them. So whoever the Stanley people are that did this, I'm very jealous and envious, and it's brilliant because they have marketed to these kids, and now they have them probably as customers for life. But that's part of the deal. I didn't realize. I thought, oh, you get your Stanley, you drink out of your Stanley, that's your cool thing. No. Then you can, and I it's now I can natural. appreciate Listen, that more. Yeah. You can, You can, I guess... Um, what would you call it? You kind of make it your own that sure, way. Sure, you. Yeah, I see something. Personalized. It, Thank you, Fred. That was the word. They have a, a snack bowl for a Stanley that you can put on the top, and it makes a little ring around it, and you can eat your snacks from around yeah, it. All kinds of it's stuff crazy. like that. <laughs> right, but see, this this caught me. I'm just telling you, it, it, as a parent, and for those of you who don't have kids right now and had kids, this is like a real thing. And the mm-hmm. kids are, oh, I have a Stanley. You don't have a Stanley. I'm like, what? How do we how do we allow this to happen? But we we have done it collectively as a society, which is why we're in the disaster that we are right now. All right, kill me. It is coming up here in just a few minutes on a Wednesday edition of the show. Um, yesterday, let me let me get into this just a little bit with some audio because yesterday RFK Jr. picked uh, Nicole Shanahan as his vice presidential candidate, and one of the things that he said was the the party that he used to know that his father that you know his uncle um that the kennedy family i I suppose used to represent they don't exist anymore nicole and i both left the democratic party our values didn't change but the democratic party did yeah you've heard bill maher say things like that right so here's nicole shanahan now nicole's got a lot of money and she's the one who funded the super bowl ad that you saw for rfk you know just a couple of months ago i worry for the party's overwhelming interest in elitism, celebrity, and winning at all costs. All right, now I'm going to address something here that I think is important in politics, ladies and gentlemen, and that is the sound of a politician's voice. Yeah. And, Sue, i got bad news for you. Yeah. It's one thing to not really be, and I'm just being honest here, it's hard for me to hear RFK because of the condition that he has, and it really it's difficult to listen to him for a length of time, even though I kind of want to hear well, what he has to say on some of this. But then I heard her, right? Okay, let's... 
And I worry that they do it even if that means turning a blind eye on the issues that they all know to be true. Okay, I think she's worse. I think her voice is worse than hers, and I didn't even think that was possible. So that ticket has no future whatsoever. I'm just going to handicap it purely on vocal quality, nothing else. What do you say? I would rather have that horrible voice than Kamala Harris in any position <laughs> anywhere. Well, you got me there. Versus okay. the cackling. Touche. Correct. That, that's actually an excellent point. But I, but like when I heard her— I know what you're saying. Yeah, it's like, like listen to the word. Like, I worry for the party's overwhelming interest in elitism, celebrity. Celebrity. And- I'm sure what, somebody what, what, Do you have her. to go to school? Like, do you have to be married to the guy from Google to sound like that or have— A lot of know, people speak out of their hmm. throat rather than their chest. Yeah. I don't they know. They should ship me out there. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't like it, Sue, so I'm just going to write that ticket All off. All right, well. But what, what's interesting is so Senator Lamping is going to come on, former Senator John Lamping, who is a regular. He's a regular on the roundtable. And John, and I think you've picked this up, Sue, John has been intrigued by what RFK represents on several fronts Mm -hmm. and where he certainly might pull votes. And the question has been, look, will this hurt Trump or Biden more? I think a lot of people definitively, and I think Lamping might be in this you know, category right now, think after the pick yesterday was by no means a libertarian or a pseudo conservative Mm -hmm. pick. She's way out there lefty and has a record as such, you know, giving money to George Gascon in in L.A. County and all this other stuff as well, that this is certainly in I think we have evidence also from the DNC that this is going to probably help Trump more than it's going to hurt Trump. So here's the the conference call that I guess got leaked from the DNC Him being in the race means that there is a greater likelihood that Donald Trump will become president again. We have to get out there and say that he doesn't have a path. This is a binary choice in November. We are doing everything in our power to get President Biden and Vice President Harris reelected. So it's critical that we take seriously every possible obstacle to that goal. And let me be clear, that's exactly what Robert F. Kennedy is in this election. He's a spoiler. The truth is that he was drafted into this race uh, by Donald Trump's top supporters and is being financed in this race by Trump's largest donor. That isn't merely a coincidence. Uh, He has no realistic path to victory in Pennsylvania. All he can do is take away votes from President Biden and make it easier for Donald Trump to win. And we simply can't afford to let that happen. So that's the spin. And I I would also argue that only part of what he said there is true. Here's a more significant issue for for the Democrats, I think. We'll we'll toss this out to John when he joins us a little later. Uh, I meant to mention this yesterday. A new poll released by a group called In Our Own Voice, National Black Women's Reproductive Justice Agenda. But just kind of pay attention here, because if the numbers are anywhere close to the truth, this is pretty significant for Democrats. 59% of black voters are almost certain to vote this fall. 12%, 12% rather, will probably vote. But think about the flip side of that, okay? 40% of black voters are pretty sure they won't vote in the election this year. And that is a huge drop from certainly 2016 and 2020, and that's going to hurt Joe Biden. So he, um, you know, he lost— primaries in 2020 to uh, Jim Clyburn, and there were there were influences from African-Americans that <laughs> were putting his nomination in jeopardy, as it, you know, had happened before decades previously. So that is a significant issue. Eighty percent of black voters voted for Biden in 2020. We've seen the numbers kind of, you know, it doesn't take much. <clears throat> if you have 77 percent of black voters, three percent go to Trump. Sorry, I'm kind of having a coughing issue here. That's significant, right? I sound like RFK Jr. right now. <laughs> but that's a big number. That's going to toss. So if people, it's the same thing. I use this number from Wisconsin all the time. Let's say Trump is able to get 10,000, 15,000 more voters in Pennsylvania. What well, doesn't need that? If 15,000, 30,000, 100,000 people stay home who didn't vote, no matter what side they're on, that's the same impact, right? Right. So... Those are things to watch for as well as we move forward here in the election cycle. We're going to talk about it all with Kilmeade coming up. We got Lamping after that. Sue's News, Alex Rich in the 4 o'clock hour. We'll talk about some new NFL kickoff rules this afternoon. Drew Good, Holden. You can explain those oh, to me. It took me 20. Look, I'm the I biggest mean, NFL I'm fan. Like, what I is... finally get it, by the way. Okay, Good. Of all places, Good. it was the Atlantic that finally set me what? straight. I'll, I'll explain later. Wow. I know, uh, it's my $38 a month that I still waste <laughs> on that thing that finally paid off. Drew Holden, who writes for the Free Beacon.
is with us this afternoon. And Tom Ackerman with an opening day preview for the Cardinals. The Dodgers and the Cardinals will be playing in about 24 hours. That's coming up this afternoon as well. Hang in there. A clear view of the roads from the Window World Traffic Center. Well, let's see. On the roads this afternoon, uh, we're off to a fairly normal start. And that means if you are westbound on 70, things look fine out of downtown. There was a little bit of volume at Lindbergh. Now, we did just have an accident reported on eastbound 70, the exit to 270. So just be aware, that one just just coming down. And the unusual thing is a jam headed into Illinois. If you are taking the Poplar Street Bridge, I'm showing a jam down there that starts on the approach to the bridge on the Missouri side all the way through the 70 split. And westbound 6440 lines up approaching Kings Highway out through McCausland, slowing again at Ballas. And we have eastbound slowing at Mason Road, westbound slowing again past Lake St. Louis Boulevard on out through the 70 split. Southbound 55, slow pockets in the construction zone anywhere from Loughborough on down. And southbound 270 isn't bad yet, but it does have some moderate volume from Page down through, looks like the Clayton Road overpass. This report brought to you by GHR Contracting. From the Window World Traffic Center, I'm Sue Thomas, 323 at 97.1 St. Louis is home for conservative talk. Not many window companies do egress windows. Egress windows are the opening shoes for emergencies for basements with no doorway exit to the outside. GHRcontracting.com. That's all we do. Egress windows. GHRcontracting.com. Well, Cotton's Ace Hardware is amazing. Chuck and the team hooked me up yesterday with some mulch, and um, we got the four-step from Scott, so that means the grass is going to look great. It's funny because it was really growing a couple of weeks ago. Then it got below freezing last week, and that stunted the growth, I think. But it is time to apply the first dose of fertilizer. I wonder if Alex Rich, I don't think he's going to allow me to do this in the next hour. Let's just say someone was given the bags of the four step. All right, Sue, you'll get a kick out of this. And they had step one, it's one bag because that's what you want to do right now, crabgrass preventer. And then you had step two, which is right around Memorial Day. Let's say that person, no names, Alex Rich, applied (laughs) step two before step one because he's an idiot. Oh, no. No names. I wonder what would happen. I don't know. But again, know. that's just a scenario that I'm dangling out there. Not that it really happened. Of course not. Right. But if it did happen, what would happen? Huh. We don't know. But what I do know is if you buy the fourth step from Scott's <laughs> from Conze's Hardware, Chuck and the team will give you a $20 Conze's Hardware gift card. So take advantage right now. And don't do what the person that may have done what I just said did and apply the wrong step in the right spot or the wrong spot. I don't even know what he did. I really don't. Go to Conze's Hardware today. Baseball is back, basketball is heating up, and the NFL Draft is right around the corner. Listen to the latest on the teams you love with the free Odyssey app. The biggest sports radio stations in the country providing unrivaled local coverage of their teams all in one place. Exclusive interviews with players, coaches, and team executives streaming live and always available on demand. Stay in the know with your favorite teams with Odyssey. A-U-D-A-C-Y. Download the free Odyssey app today. Warmer spring weather is right around the corner, and now is the time to plan your home's exterior renovation project. Banner Construction is booking now for homeowners to be first in line for beautiful James Hardy siding and pillow replacement windows. Beat the price increases and plan your project now. Visit BannerConstruction.com or call 314-569-1050 and get a free in-home design and estimate. 314-569-1050 and have a banner day. Hey, it's Annie, and I'm here with with my friend Stewie from Stewart's American Mortgage. I keep hearing about interest rates coming down right now. I got friends who are looking for their next home and they're wondering when's the right time to jump in the market and buy that next house. All right, Annie, you know, this is a big mistake people are making right now. They're saying, I'm going to wait till the interest rates drop. They're starting to drop. Let's get into the game and buy the house. Well, what's going to happen here is there's going to be some extra inventory, but the amount of people trying to buy the house is going to be disproportionate to the amount of inventory that's going to come into the market. That means bidding wars. Your best bet is to buy the house right now. Go ahead and pay a little bit higher on the interest rate. Refinance with the bagel loan later on. No closing costs. This way you get the house of your dreams and you got the better deal long term. Don't make the mistake. Don't wait. Sounds like a plan, and I'm going to tell my friends that right away, and I'll tell you this. Call 314-324-4440 and go right straight to Stewie for your questions. 
NMLS number 226715. Are you ready to smell better naked? I'm Dr. Shannon Klingman, the OBGYN creator of Lumi, the whole body deodorant that's clinically proven to control odor for 72 hours on pits, feet, privates, and beyond. It's pH optimized to safely and effectively control odor anywhere you have it, but wish you didn't. Plus, it's proven to work better than a shower with soap alone. Whether you shower twice a day or three times a week, Lumi works better. And who doesn't want zero body odor? With over 200,000 five-star reviews, I'm so sure you're going to love it or you can return it for free. There's a special offer for listeners. Use code 800 and get an extra $5 off a Lumi starter pack that comes with a solid stick, cream tube, free product of your choice, and ships free with code 800. L-U-M-E deodorant dot com. Code 800 for an extra $5 off a Lumi starter pack. Love it or return it for free. That's L-U-M-E deodorant dot com. Code 800. Tony LaRussa here. Men, are you running out of stamina rounding third base? If so, call my friends at Victory Men's Health in O'Fallon, Illinois. Scoring at home is important, just as important as crossing the plate with the winning run. VictoryMensHealth.com. It's time for a $98 furnace tune-up. This portion of the show is sponsored by Jerry Kelly, heating and air conditioning. Don't miss the Mark Cox Morning Show Spring Bourbon Fling at Clayton Winehouse. Kim St. Ange here. Join Mark and me on Thursday, April 18th from 5.30 to 8 p.m. We'll try New Riff, Old Dominic, Okaneedon, and more. Tickets are on sale now at 971talk.com slash events. I can't believe baseball starts tomorrow. I'm excited, but I'm terrified, Weird. so I'm just going to tell you right now. Well, you have been worried. very positive about the Cardinals. Right, but there is some good news here. If you dig real deep, and, and you know this because I usually report back on a Monday morning in NFL season, my success rate at actually accurately calling anything in sports is about 0.11%. <laughs> right? I, yeah, so that's if, if, not I high. Say, if I'm sitting here, man, the Cardinals are going to kill it. They're going to, I'd be terrified. If I were if I were okay. a Cardinals fan, right. so I'm I'm not saying this is a complete reverse psychology move, but, but I am saying that it might be right. Yeah. Uh-huh. But Tom Ackerman's going to join us in uh, the five o'clock hour. Tommy's great, and I, I do think that his destiny is going to be Cardinals play by play one of these days in the future. But he's been down there in Jupiter, and um, we'll get his take. And I'm excited about Victor Scott and seeing some of the new blood, and we'll see if um, you know a lot of people are thinking Nolan Arenado. This is maybe. He's getting older, and if he's going to have an MVP caliber year, this would maybe be it. this would be That'd it. That'd be so awesome. We'll, we'll keep our fingers crossed. Hey, Mr. Brian Kilmeade, who you hear every morning on 97.1 FM Talk. He's the co-host of Fox & Friends. You see him here in St. Louis on Saturday nights at 8 p.m. Central on One Nation. Is back with us this afternoon. Brian, how are you? Oh, good, Mark. How are you? Well, I'm good. I guess I'm better than Ronald McDaniel right now. And I just, wow. yeah, I mentioned this yesterday. I knew you'd have probably a lot to say. I was watching this morning when um, when you were on the show. And I, I just, it's it's fascinating. I guess it doesn't really surprise me, but you need consensus. Workplace consensus. We do that here at Odyssey St. Louis when we hire people, too. We pull the staff, Brian, just to make sure everyone's <laughs> cool with it. Right. Hey, if, if anyone doesn't want Mark Reed in there, we were in there every day. Yeah. Put your hand up. And a lot of times, you know, that's how you get fired. Because if you can't get consensus with everybody, and by the way, and an apology, not only do they fire her, they apologize. Yeah, that part was interesting to me as well, because the the guy in in his statement yesterday, after kind of going back and forth for a couple of days on whether this was going to happen, I guess they felt once Chuck Todd went off on Sunday morning with Kristen Welker, the the momentum just kept rolling and then she was done. I I just don't understand this. He just wanted uh, for him to lose meet the press. He obviously uh, not well, well thought of there. I mean, he lost MSNBC, and then he there he is as a panelist, and he says to Kristen Welker, "Sorry, I know you couldn't protect yourself, but let me just say how, you know, what a bad spot we put you in. Why is she in a bad spot? She asked every tough question there was. Rana handled every quest, quest, a rough question that came to her. They moved on. And she should have been a commentator. So when you well, had a panel." You'll have Republicans, you'll have independents, and you have somebody who's not an anti-Trumper on your panel. That's what they worried about. Yeah, so I don't know, you know, the, the precedent for, for much of this legacy media stuff has been just so despicable in the first place. Uh, I, I, you know, this just sort of fits in line with a lot of the stuff that they do, but it is rather stunning. Now, the other thing that's, you know, you're never going to hear when they talk about this, and I'm sure that you guys 
In fact, I think this is where I got this audio. Look, they don't have very much of a memory because it wasn't too long ago when the lefties were saying stuff like this, as you know, Brian. Trump knows he's an illegitimate president. The president or elect, although legally elected, is not legitimate. And the only way they could win the election was to stop the voting in Florida. So there's so much hypocrisy that goes back and forth on this stuff, but it only seems to get exposed on one side, as usual. Right. I mean, Stacey Abrams in governor, she's a real governor. Remember that? Uh, it wasn't just Hillary Clinton. It was everybody. And also, uh, when you go back to Vice President Joe Biden, try to gavel in the Electoral College and make it official, Trump won. He had one objection after another. Biden had to finally stand up and go, enough, and he just gaveled it out and stormed out because these Democrats were not going to allow Trump to be elected. Now, all of a sudden, obviously, January 6th happens. Uh, they want to sue him and you know, put him in jail for it, and then they have uh, primetime uh, hearings about it. We understand that. Liz Cheney led it. How would that go for her? There was only one side. It was a big show. You hired ABC to do it. So you go ahead and you, you put that forward, and now— you want to say if somebody was there, like Ronna McDaniel, they're like, you didn't stop them. You helped them. You, you interviewed electors. So how dare you try to be, uh, come here? You know what I worry about, Mark, most of all? I worry that if, if Trump wins, are they even going to acknowledge him? Are they going to take any of his speeches, any of his remarks? Uh, if he passes a law, are, are they going to ignore it? Are they going to try to tell people he, uh, he's not worthy of the job? It's only that. Joe Biden was addled that he won. I mean, what are they going to say? Well, look, that, that yeah, in another in another era or time frame, that might sound like a crazy talk, right? That what you just said, but it is a legitimate concern considering what they tend to do over there. So I, I think it's a great question. It's CNN, it's uh, ABC, CBS. They probably won't even cover them. You know, I'm not telling you, like the major speeches they already bail out of. I mean, did they bail out of Joe Biden's speech when he said he took the train across the uh, Francis Scott Key Bridge, when there's no train tracks? Uh, did, we, did they bail out of that when he said that? Yeah, I thought that was an interesting moment. Let's segue into that. Have you been on that bridge before? I'm guessing maybe you have been. Yeah, but not not consciously. I, I mean, I went to Fort McHenry a bunch of times. I don't really look at the name of the bridges, uh, but it was at Fort McHenry to do the War of 1812, the you know Andrew Jackson miracle of New Orleans. So, uh, and I did a bunch of specials on there. So that's right there where... Where the Scott Key actually was, where he was kept on a ship trying to get his friend off uh, who was being held. He's a rich guy. He's trying to get him off and negotiate. Next thing you know, they start bombing Fort McHenry, and he sits there and writes that poem that becomes a Statue of Liberty. And, and I, I just don't understand this. As tragic as that was, and we still want to find out what happened and why that 30 minutes into uh, a journey, it crashes into the bridge. But I don't understand why the port has to be closed. I mean— We'll use our heavy equipment to get the bridge out of there, do what we have to do with search and rescue, and then we get it going in and out. It's going to hurt commuters. We don't need the bridge to use the port. So do that, and then I would have this weekend, I would have all the leading bridge makers bidding in the, yes. at the uh, White House this weekend. And I want to find out exactly how to do it, suspension bridge, whatever it takes. I'm not an engineer. And then I want to, I'm going to show that on Tuesday. This is the plan I'm going to go with. And then I want to find out how long it's going to take to do that plan, how many days we have to slow down traffic to get in the water to finish the bridge, if at all. Suspension bridge doesn't need those uh, those uh, uh, in those columns. So, I mean, that's what I want to see. I don't want to hear we're working together, we're doing our best. I, I don't want to hear about money in Congress. Money's going to be there. Both sides agree to it. Let's go. And if this guy, um, if uh, Wes Moore wants to be the next president, this is his moment. Well, you're right. Look, you're you're absolutely right. There's an opportunity here to show leadership and actually get things done. And I don't think, you know, I, I said this yesterday, you and I can and disagree on some of these things when it comes to spending in Ukraine, et cetera. But look, I, I think there'd be a pretty unanimous consensus from people in this country to say, look, we're going to put as many resources into getting this port back open, this bridge rebuilt, considering what it means to Baltimore and what it means to the country. And, and that's the type of thing I think the American people could get behind when it comes to sending part of their paycheck. And, and supporting. I don't think there'd be, yeah. that would not be controversial. But I also would, also, I do want to find out who's responsible. I do want to find out who said it was okay, that engine checked out. I do want to find out if there was negligence there. So I'm not saying that we, that should hold up Absolutely. the project. I mean, let's back up the project. But if, you know, if you just think you're going to randomly go to, uh, go to Sri Lanka, and but by the way, you're not going to be able to get out of Baltimore. Uh, somebody greenlit that journey, that manifest without credentials or without caring. The other thing is what I'm finding out, we always learn stuff about this when we have a disaster. 
I didn't know there were fenders on columns and why there weren't fenders there. If there was some type of fender prevention, we just told the terrorists that to take out a major bridge easily. Yeah. So now we got to get some fenders. What we just revealed. Well, that, you know, it's interesting you say that because whenever anything like this happens, I always think to myself, man, I, I'm almost surprised that it hasn't happened before in some sort of nefarious way. Yeah. And that's why, you know, I see some people on the Internet saying this is exactly what Al Qaeda would do. They blow up this bridge this way. It is the only place that you get hazard that's greenlit to have hazardous material going in and out. But I'm not looking. I'm not thinking that at all. But you got to be open to it to see if any. You know, these crazy lunatics did, uh, did anything to it. I just want to see an investigation, but just rebuild it. I don't want to see a 10-year project. We forget about 9-11. 9-11 took forever to rebuild, to green light a, a design, and then forever to rebuild. It just took, and once it's there, people forgot about it. But it was extremely frustrating. I think it took three times the amount from the original World Trade Center. Yeah, no, I, I, well, we'll see what happens because I think that there's an opportunity here and I hope that they can get things on the same page and this doesn't become, you know, a big political football. Although I, I'm certain, I said this yesterday, I'm kind of waiting for it to happen because Mayor Pete's done this before. In some way, shape, or form, I'm convinced that they're going to blame this on um, racism and white supremacy, what happened yesterday. You just wait, Brian. Well, put it this way. The tragedy that hit those uh, bridge workers who are doing potholes, it's one thing. The fact that none of them speak English and are migrants and yeah. don't even know they were here, who hired them? You know, I don't want to talk about it in times of tragedy, but basically they say, we like to interview some of the surviving workers, but nobody speaks English. I'm thinking to myself, oh, that's interesting. Yep, yep. Nope, that is an aspect of the story for sure. Brian Kilmey back with us this afternoon on 97.1 FM Talk. All right, so what do you think? I'm going to spend a little time with my friend, former Senator John Lamping, here in a few minutes to break down his thoughts on RFK Jr. and the VP pick. There's a guy named Jeffrey Tucker on the uh, the Twitter, the former Twitter, that says, response, Trump's base thrilled, right-leaning Trump skeptics devastated, left-leaning and estranged from DNC intrigued, Biden partisans panicked. What do you make of the pick? Uh, I like to see what his next move is. I don't think uh, the pick is is really hurting uh, Democrats because nobody thinks she's moderate. Nobody thinks she's not extremely left wing. Nobody thinks that she's a Republican. So the whole goal was to blur the line. She didn't blur any line with her. She's got money and she's probably really smart, but she wants to be more left wing. Remember, she gave to that crazy DA in she gave to that crazy DA in Los Angeles. She donated yes, to come. him. Yeah. That's yeah, right. so that that's important. So like, she's probably bright. She'll be good in the national stage. She'll be poised on her feet. But what happens is there's no longer any doubt that RFK is, a de- is running as a Democrat. It may be more to the left than the current Democrat. He just happens to be younger with more charisma. So uh, I think it does hurt Democrats. And look, if he hops on the libertarian ticket and he reforms some of his views, and or if he wants to go no labels, He's now in eight, eight uh, bo, bo, no labels those on 18 states. He's on one. Right, Utah. And 50 libertarians on 50. So if he could do something there, then he becomes a big factor. But I'd like to see what happens now, how many states he gets on before he has to make a real big decision. One Nation, Saturday night, 8 p.m. here in the Midwest in St. Louis. What you got going? Anything cooking yet? Well, John Heist's going to be on with us, and he just talks about uh, how we we're raising a kid through the iPhone of uh, paranoid suicide oriented kids the numbers are through the roof and how he has got a plan to break it he did the coddling of the american mind which was number one for a long time and i think this book is going to be even bigger um we are definitely looking at tom shalou will be on for sure and we're still debating a few topics i got to see what emerges you know i don't know if this harbor is going to be this big i'm not sure if we're going to be talking about uh i know this I'm going to probably, I can tell you for the first time, we're just getting at the details. I'm going to interview President Trump in my hometown tomorrow. Nice. Because that cop that was slain uh, was from Massapequa. I'm from Massapequa. He's in my town. So he's going to this guy. The president, the former president of the United States, is going to the wake. And I said, after you get out, you know, in the Sea of Blue, there's supposed to be 100,000 people there. I said, what, afterwards, you want to get out? And we're working up the details. So I'll have a part of a Trump interview, I'm sure part on Fox and Friends and then part on One Nation. That sounds very exciting, Brian Kilmey. Have a great week, and we will talk uh, next week. Go get him, Mark Reardon.
Traffic Center. There is a jam if you are headed into Illinois. So if you are taking the Stan Musial Veterans Memorial Bridge, it's a slow go. Worse is the poplar, and that's for the entire length of the bridge through the 5570 split. Now, westbound 40 is a slow go. Kings Highway out through McCausland, and out west there are some slow pockets too. And that's mainly from Wing Haven out through the 70 split. 70 westbound looks good out of downtown. Volume at Zumbel and at K, but nothing too terrible. 55 slowing in the construction zone, headed down toward Revis Barracks. Southbound 270, moderate volume. But it does stretch from Page. Now, this is in pockets, but it goes down to about Big Bend. And other than that, we're okay. But we had an earlier accident westbound 6440 near Ballas. Still a little bit of a slow go through that area. This report brought to you by Jerry Kelly Heating and Air Conditioning. From the Window World Traffic Center, I'm Sue Thomas. 343 at 971, St. Louis is home for conservative talk. My best friend Jenny came over for coffee, said it's cold enough in here to play hockey. Well, my fern is broken, it's already late. Call Jerry Kelly because they're open till 8. JerryKelly.com. They're fast and they're good and they got it going on. Jerry Kelly. With each breath, allergens, germs, and viruses get trapped in your nose. Now there's a simple, easy, and effective way to clean your nose and protect your health. It's called Navage. Navage available at Navage.com. Former pro football offensive tackle Mitch Schwartz knows for a guy, buying jewelry is a daunting task at most stores, but not if you go to Diamonds Direct. It's very simple and very easy process for a guy to go in there and not be overwhelmed. Mitch found Diamonds Direct and has been back many times buying jewelry for his wife, Brooke, and he's never felt any pressure. They're going to educate you about what you're looking for, what the diamonds are, how the process works. At Diamonds Direct, we respect both you and your budget. I think everyone's kind of searching for value you don't want to be taken advantage of, and Diamonds Direct is leading in that regard. You're going to feel really comfortable there. You're going to have a good time. You're going to find something that looks amazing and that you're going to get the best value for it. So if you're worried about getting sweaty palms when you walk into a jewelry store, relax. Take Mitch's advice and enjoy the experience at Diamonds Direct. We have definitely recommended Diamonds Direct to friends, to other teammates. Everyone else who has been through there has had as awesome an experience as we have. Diamonds Direct. Your love, our passion. Get directions, showroom hours, and more at DiamondsDirect.com. Hi, I'm Bob Kershaw with Retirement Advisory Group. Are you worried about market volatility in this election year? Are you concerned your money won't last you through retirement? Hi, I'm Tammy Kershaw, and as a family-owned business, we are committed to protecting your retirement, whether you're nearing retirement or already retired. We have a lot of folks that aren't aware of all the new investment choices that are available, which give you growth and protection from losses at the same time. Are you aware of all the fees that you are currently paying? We can show you how to avoid those fees. So come in now for your free retirement review and get a second opinion on your retirement plan. And just for coming in, you'll get a copy of our latest edition book, Your Key to a Worry-Free Retirement. Let us show you how to retire with confidence. We are proud to say we haven't lost a penny of our clients' money in 38 years, and we won't lose a penny of yours either. Let our family help your family. Call us now at 314-993-9494 or go online to retirementkey.com. That's retirementkey.com. This is a special alert to all Americans who own a vehicle with less than 200,000 miles with an auto warranty about to expire or with no warranty coverage at all. Due to a decline in the economy, CarShield is announcing a low-cost month-to-month vehicle protection plan. Plan that is now available to the public to save any driver out-of-pocket expenses on future auto repairs. Call now to find out how you can pay almost nothing for covered auto repairs. Yes, you heard that correctly. Pay almost nothing for covered auto repairs. An open phone line has been established for all drivers to call for a free quick quote. Call 800-652-5241 now. Drivers who are covered will not have to pay for covered repairs again. This protection plan is at an all-time low. Additionally, drivers who activate this vehicle protection today will also receive free roadside assistance, free towing, and car rental options at no additional cost. Call us for your free quick quote today. 800-652-5241. That's 800-652-5241. What do you have to lose? Call 800-652-5241. Again, 800-652-5241. To have a roof over your head, a nice roof over your head, is very important. That's Rick talking about his experience with Rhino Shield ceramic coating. We got Rhino Shield 18 years ago, and they're very cooperative on getting us the right paint. They're in and out and done in no time. Once it was finished, it looked great. We were very happy with it. The main reason Rick called Rhino 
Auto Shield is because it's backed by a 25-year transferable warranty. We've watched a lot of people get their house painted three or four times, and we haven't had to do any of it. I don't know about you guys, but I don't want to have to paint it every five, seven years. Take a tip from Rick and put down the paintbrush and call Rhino Shield for your free evaluation. 877-25-RHINO. 877-25-RHINO. Or visit 877-25-RHINO.com. We got Rhino Shield 18 years ago. Financially makes sense, especially if it's going to last like this did. Still looks great. Call now. 877-25-RHINO or 877-25-RHINO.com. Don't paint, don't rhino, go Rhino Shield. Never paint your house again. Rhino Shield. The Mark Cox Morning Show. Abraham Hamilton the third. If gender is fluid, why can it only flow one way? If it's fluid, fluidity is reciprocal, I would imagine. Weekdays from 5 to 9. The Mark Cox Morning Show. On St. Louis's home for conservative talk. Most importantly, looking for a partner who is a young person. And Nicole is only 38 years old. Robert Kennedy Jr., after announcing that Nicole Shanahan was going to be his running mate as an independent candidate, even though he's only on one ballot at this point, former Missouri Senator John Lamping, good friend of the show, and a regular on the Reardon Roundtable weighing in on that this afternoon because he's been, I think it's safe to say, John, how are you, that you've been intrigued by uh, RFK Jr. and some of the things that he brings to the table, right? Oh, for sure. But I have to tell you, you I'm kind of having a weird day. You know, I woke up this morning and I realized that I really wanted to run for statewide office in Missouri, and I didn't know which one to run for. But you know, I figured I'd get in my car and drive down and figure it out by then, and only get you know get going to realize it finally closed. So I may have to wait till 2028 before I decide. You 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 couldn't resist, could you? I was going to ask you about some of some of the shenanigans. We'll get to that here in a moment. Oh, yeah, uh, and I have deep appreciation for that comment. I really do. But on RFK, look, you you don't think this was the best pick if you're maybe thinking that some Republicans or conservatives would come over and, and vote for this ticket, right? No. So uh, so full disclosure. So I, I have some, a very very good friend of mine who's very close to the campaign and has been bundling money for them. He's a big fundraiser for them. And, uh, you know, from the very beginning, uh, RFK hit a chord. He struck a chord. You know, he, his anti-establishment comments and the depth at which he understands the corruption that exists in things like, you know, big pharma and other corporatist type things. From the very beginning of his candidacy, he caught the attention of, of, the, of the Trump crowd, of the mega conservatives. And a lot of what he had to say uh, really struck home with them, and 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 there was a lot of conversation about what do we do with with uh, with RFK. Uh, it's my understanding that the Trump camp reached out to RFK a month or two ago to contemplate him, you know, maybe being uh, Trump's VP, and um, and you know he didn't want to do that. And uh, and then the last, I would say the last month or two, RFK's campaign has kind of floundered and. And then now today, uh, yesterday with his announcement with Nicole Shanahan, who is – she is, you know, uh, she is a, a leftist from Silicon Valley, very, very wealthy, young attorney who's never been in politics. It, it's, um, it, it sends a signal to anyone who might have supported him, him that we're thinking about alternatives to Trump that, that this is too much like a very far-left uh, young woman, and, uh, and it won't be – I don't think it would be any kind of issue for the Trump campaign. Yeah, so now, you know, I think the conventional wisdom would be that the Democrats are a little bit more concerned that this is going to pull from from Biden. Is that kind of, because the question is always, well, where are the votes going to be pulled from? Which major candidate? And I think there's been, you know, a split decision on that, that it would probably generally both sides w- would take a hit to a certain extent, but maybe not as much now. John, is that your your take? Well, I think uh, originally it was hard to determine, but the polling has been really clear the last month or two that he, he was going he was going to take and is going to take from Biden and not from Trump. And with this, it, this kind of seals the deal. And uh, I have to suspect now that the Democrats will do everything they can to go after him. You know, he's only on one ballot, and every state has their own um, their own process. A lot of them require you to have a, a vice presidential candidate. Uh, and that you know, the understanding is is that she's already been a very big donor to his campaign, and um, he's been he's been running uh, primarily with the money coming from his PAC, and the idea is that now she'll be able to donate to the campaign, and they may have a better chance of getting on the ballot. So I, I, I Trump came out today and he tweeted on True Social 
uh, he, he basically framed RFK as a, as a liberal, and, and I think any any threat to Trump is gone. And I think the Biden campaign, they have so many different things they've got to concern themselves with. But I think, um, you know, this is very analogous to Bush one's reelection when Ross Perot, you know, Bush one was out of touch with the base of the party. I mean, Ross Perot ultimately became the Tea Party, that movement that was Ross Perot. And I think that RFK, if he gets on the ballot, he'll definitely take votes away from the Biden campaign. Well, let, let me, because I didn't leave enough time here, I, I do want you to weigh in. Yesterday I had uh, Senator Coleman on, Mary Elizabeth Coleman, who had announced that she was going to run for the 3rd District congressional seat. There was a flurry of activity when Blaine Luke Meyer announced uh, a month and a half ago, whatever it was, two months, that he would not seek re-election. So now you have Mary Elizabeth shifting to the Secretary of State's race. Caleb Browden was in that race. He's out. He's a Columbia lawmaker. You have Dean Plocker, who's in Baldwin, who's the Speaker of the House, was running for Lieutenant Governor. He's out of that. He's going to Secretary of State. What the hell, John, right? There's just a lot of political ambition, too much political ambition in Missouri state politics. Uh, it's an honor to, to be elected to serve. It's a difficult job to be in the House or in the Senate. Um, they, they have Senators have tremendous power. I mean, a Missouri senator has tremendous power. But for whatever reason, um, with Republicans and supermajorities these last 10 or 15 years, the ambition has really uh, caught the attention of so many people that are down there. And I don't think anyone can give a, 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 a really good answer as to why on a day or two before finally uh, were to occur that you would suddenly decide that one race was better for you than another race. And, um, you know, everyone involved are all capable and they can certainly serve well in their jobs. But, you know, in Mary Elizabeth's case, the Missouri State Senator, she's only in her second year. And, and uh, there's, there's a way to serve. And, uh, well, you know, I told her yesterday, look, I, th- I can make a strong case for her having more influence and more important influence in the Senate than, than being in the Secretary of State's office. And maybe this is just me. I don't really care, you know, what, what the policy um, issues are surrounding all the candidates for some of these offices. I want them to do the job if they're Secretary of State. So this gets kind of under my craw just a little bit when all this stuff happens and they're jumping from ship to ship. And Plocker in particular. Look, th- this guy, I-, I don't get it because I liked him. We used to have him on the air. He was very good at explaining some of these issues. So he came on a regular basis, right? Yeah. And then he's got this ethics investigation, right? Well, then they don't come on at all, right? So he's going to run a state. He-, he doesn't do any media as far as I'm concerned anymore. So he's going to do a statewide um you know, I guess, uh, attempt in an office, and he wants to do interviews for that, I'm guessing, with, with media. He'll want free media, or maybe he doesn't care because Greitens didn't care, so maybe that's the path that Republicans take. Look, no one, I mean, I know Dean, and he's a nice enough person, and, and but nobody's crying out for him to be in statewide office, and if he wasn't the Speaker of the House, he wouldn't have one, a million and a half dollars to run for office, and, you know, what's, what you should realize is that is that Caleb Rowden was understood to be Rex Singfield's candidate in this race, and that Rex Singfield's, uh, you know, the idea would be he, he would donate like a, a million dollars to whoever he decided would be the candidate. And so Caleb was going to be Rex's candidate. So now, when you, uh, that money has not been, you know, he hasn't declared yet who's his candidate going right. to be. Right. Well, that's the competition. But, yeah, at this point. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, look, uh, uh, there, there are a handful of people in all – every race has got a prime. There's three people running for treasure. But I, I, they're, they're, in, in each of these races, there are people that have that declared their candidacy a, a year ago. And, and they've been switched. going around the state uh, consistently explaining why they think they're the best person for the race. And I, you know, I, I think. And then they shift gears. Yeah, I got to go because I'm up against the clock, so I got to cut you off. And I don't mean to do that, but it, it's confusing. I think it's confusing to the voters in particular. Your view of the roads from the Window World Traffic Center. There is a jam if you are headed into Illinois. And that is both headed for and crossing the Poplar Street Bridge and the Stan Musial Veterans Memorial Bridge. Both are jammed today all the way through the 70 split. Uh, westbound 6440 lines up near Kings Highway out through McCausland, slowing again at Lindbergh and then west of Wing Haven out through the 70 split. 70 westbound looks fine until you get out through about 79, slowing there out through K. Southbound 270, just moderate volume for the most part, but it does stretch from Page down through Gravoy. 55 is a slow go through the construction zone, headed down toward Revis Barracks. And unfortunately, if you were with us this morning and know about the fatal accident, eastbound 44 just past Sullivan. They are still out there blocking the right lane, only the left lane getting by. From the Window World Traffic Center, I'm Sue Thomas. 
357 at 97.1, St. Louis's home for conservative talk. You want to retire soon, but everyone keeps telling you to wait until you're 65. After all, that's the age that you qualify for Medicare and you're close to full retirement age. I'm Marvin Mitchell, president of Compass Retirement Solutions. In my new book, Retire Early, the nine critical decisions when retiring before 65, I discuss proper planning to help make early retirement possible. When to take Social Security, what to do with your 401k, health care, how to maximize retirement income, and much more. Get a complimentary copy of Retire Early by calling 1-800-743-8510. That's 1-800-743-8510. Can you retire early? Call 1-800-743-8510 for your copy of Retire Early, the nine critical decisions when retiring before 65. Investments and services offered through Compass Retirement Group, a registered investment advisory in Missouri and Illinois. Compass Retirement Solutions is not affiliated with the U.S. government or any governmental agency. Prescriptions require an online consultation with a health care provider who will determine if appropriate restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. Hey, guys, did you know there's a generic form of Viagra that works just the same but is 95% cheaper? And you can get it online at hymns.com slash joy. Through Hims, you'll get a free medical consultation to determine the ED medication that's best for you. Discreet shipping if prescribed, a 100% online process, and a range of treatment options, including trusted generic alternatives to the name brands, at up to 95% off. ED is personal, and at Hims, so is treating it. Just go to hymns.com slash joy and get connected to a licensed medical provider online for free. With zero copay, no expensive appointments, and no awkward face to face conversations. To start your free online visit, you need to go to this exclusive address, hymns.com slash joy. That's hymns.com slash joy for your free online visit. H I M S dot com slash J O Y. Frustrated with slow internet speeds? Missouri is set to spend more than $1 billion to bring broadband internet to locations without service. You have until April 26th to submit evidence that service has been incorrectly reported for locations that should be marked as unserved and eligible for funding. To check service reported for your home or business, go to broadbandmap.mo.gov. That's all one word, broadbandmap.mo.gov. Brought to you by the Missouri Department of Economic Development. The Lifestyles Unlimited team of real estate investing mentors and educators want to meet you. Learn to retire in five years or less. In St. Louis, two days only, April 27th and 28th. Go to GiveMeTotalFreedom.com. GiveMeTotalFreedom.com. Promo code 2024. KFTK FM Florissant. An Odyssey station. A long and difficult path on Lisa Brady. Fox News was described for Baltimore, where a vital port is closed until further notice after yesterday's collapse of the key bridge. A portion of it still resting on the cargo ship that hit a support column. We still don't fully know the condition of the portions of the bridge that are still standing or of infrastructure that is below the surface of the water. So rebuilding will not be quick or easy or cheap, but we will get it done. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg says there's no timeline yet for moving the ship and reopening the port, but that he would expect that could happen much more quickly than bridge reconstruction. Maryland Governor Wes Moore says the port closure will have a wide-ranging economic impact. The Port of Baltimore is responsible for uh, cars, heavy vehicles, agricultural equipment, the largest amount in the entire country. So this is not just going to impact Maryland. This is impacting the farmer in Kentucky. It's impacting the auto dealer in Michigan. Fox Business's Hillary Vaughn. The other big economic question is, could this impact inflation with supply chain hiccups as goods are being rerouted to other ports? But Secretary Buttigieg says today he doesn't expect this to have a huge impact on inflation. He thinks that the supply chain issues here are more specialized and localized than what we saw during the pandemic. So they don't expect this to impact inflation broadly nationwide. As the NTSB investigates, the Coast Guard says the ship operator has activated its salvage and pollution plans. Divers continue the search for the bodies of six missing construction workers. The U.S. will keep pushing for a ceasefire and hostage deal between Israel and Hamas. We do think it's possible to bridge those differences and we're going to continue to try to bridge those differences. State Department spokesman Matthew Miller as the Israeli Prime Minister says he hopes Hamas got the message that international pressure won't work. Though Israel's also working to reschedule a canceled trip for talks in Washington on the Israeli military plans for the city of Rafa in Gaza. America is listening to Fox News. Why choose a Sleep Number Smart Bed? Can it keep me warm when I'm cold? Wait, no. 
I'm always hot. Sleep Number does that. The Climate 360 Smart Bed actively cools or warms up to 13 degrees on either side for your ideal sleep temperature. 94% of Sleep Number smart sleepers report better sleep. J.D. Power ranks Sleep Number number one in customer satisfaction with mattresses purchased in-store. And now save $1,000 on our most popular Sleep Number smart bed and Saturday. For J.D. Power 2023 award information, visit jdpower.com slash awards. To find a store near you, visit sleepnumber.com. Are you over 30 and putting off life insurance? It's time to get a quick quote from Ethos, a better, easier way to get term life insurance, all online with no medical exam. Answer a few health questions and you could be approved for up to $2 million. Isn't it worth 10 minutes to help protect your family's financial security? Ethos, up to $2 million in coverage with no medical exam. Some policies as low as a dollar a day. Answer a few health questions and get your free quote at checkethos.com. That's checkethos.com. Air Comfort Service, heating, cooling, and insulation, weather. Chief Meteorologist Dave Murray. Chilly is the word for all our evening plans with temperatures in the mid-40s for a couple of hours and 30 for the overnight low. Clear and cold, a light frost and freeze again towards morning. Thursday, plenty of sunshine, fast afternoon warm-up, 65, clear and 42. Thursday night, Friday, good Friday, sunny and warmer in the afternoon with a high Friday of 72. This is 97.1 FM Talk, Chief Meteorologist Dave Murray. I'm Jim Chesko with your money now. A late buying binge carried stocks to solid gains today. The S&P 500 rising 45 points to earn a fresh closing high. The Dow Jones Industrials jumped 477 points. And the Nasdaq Composite added 83. Kind of a big deal for Amazon. It'll spend another $2.75 billion in backing San Francisco-based startup Anthropic, which is widely viewed as a front-runner in generative artificial intelligence. This marks Amazon's largest outside investment in its three-decade history. It follows an initial $1.25 billion investment made by the tech giant in that startup last September. Amazon will maintain a minority stake in Anthropic. Domino's is taking steps to expand its operations in Poland and Croatia. The pizza chain investing $13.9 million to support growth at its operations there. There are already more than 100 Domino's locations in Poland and Croatia, and the company says the investment will help it do more rollouts. That's your money now. I have diabetes. I'm at risk for pneumococcal pneumonia. I have asthma. I'm at risk, too. If you're 19 or older with chronic conditions like asthma, diabetes, COPD, or heart disease, or are 65 or older, you are at increased risk for pneumococcal pneumonia. Ask your doctor or pharmacist about Prevnar 20, pneumococcal 20-valent conjugate vaccine, a Pfizer vaccine that can help protect you against pneumococcal pneumonia in just one dose. Even if you've already been vaccinated with other pneumonia vaccines, Prevnar 20 may help provide added protection. Prevnar 20 is approved for adults to help prevent infections from 20 strains of the bacteria that cause pneumococcal pneumonia. Continued approval may depend on a supportive study. Don't get Prevnar 20 if you've had a severe allergic reaction to the vaccine or its ingredients. Adults with weakened immune systems may have a lower response to the vaccine. Side effects include pain and swelling at the injection site, fatigue, headache, muscle, and joint pain. For full prescribing information, please call 1-855- You found 97.1 FM Talk, where we ask questions even when the legacy media won't. Especially when the legacy media won't. St. Louis is home for conservative talk. 97.1 FM Talk. Look, if you're in the market for flooring here in the St. Louis area, I want you to turn to Michael's Flooring Outlet. And there's one thing that I think you should look for when it comes to customer satisfaction, and that's consistency. And the consistency comes when you look at the reviews at igotfloor.com for the customers of Michael's Flooring Outlet. Very consistent. Wonderful experience at Michael's Flooring. They mentioned Kim a lot. Kim is one of um, Mike's team members out there in uh, St. Peter's, I believe. A lot of the people online say, look, we've used Michael's Flooring multiple times since purchasing our home. Great customer service, great installers. They did a wonderful job. They knock it out of the park, and they have the best products, like some of the Mohawk products, soft, silky carpeting, some hard flooring that really adjust to your lifestyle. If you have kids, if you have pets, if you want something that is stain resistant and scratch resistant, they're going to guide you into the right proper product and they're going to do it with experience. And that's something I think that we should all be thinking of. We know that the level of customer service has gone down significantly, probably, well, it's gone down for a while now, but certainly since the pandemic. And you don't want to walk into a big box store, order flooring, something that's going to be in your home for a long time with someone that doesn't know much about the products or this industry. You're going to get exactly the opposite at Michael's Flooring Outlet. Three locations in the area in um, Creve Corps on Olive, Darden Prairie, 
in Town Square Avenue in that mall there and then Old Town St. Peter's at 116 Main Street. The website, igotfloor.com. You've been listening to the very popular Wellness One for many years, Saturdays and Sundays on 97.1 FM Talk. We're happy to share that we've expanded the show to four times a week. Yes, four times every weekend. Saturday at 10 a.m., Saturday at 8 p.m., Sunday at 9 a.m., and Sunday at 2 p.m. It's the same great show designed to cut through the nonsense and provide you a common sense, science-based strategy for a healthy life. So join TJ and Aaron for Wellness One. Now, four times a week on 97.1 FM Talk. If you're considering an annuity as part of your retirement plan, we need to talk. Hi, I'm Bob Stockdale, Senior Vice President Investments with the ClearPath Wealth Management Group at Stiefel and host of On the Money, Saturday mornings at 11 on 97.1 FM Talk. Annuities can be a useful tool for some retirement investors, but not all annuities are created equal. Every week, we meet clients who own complex annuities that don't suit their needs and, in some cases, actively undermine their retirement plan. Before you purchase an annuity, get a second opinion from the ClearPath Wealth Management Group at Stiefel. Requesting a consultation is free of charge. To request a free consultation, contact us at clearpathinvesting.com. That's clearpathinvesting.com. Or call us at 636-695-2650. That's clearpathinvesting.com or 636-695-2650. Stiefel Nicholas and Company Incorporated member NYSC and SIPC. This hour of the Mark Reardon Show is sponsored by Gamma Tree Experts. Your trees deserve the best care. Call Gamma Tree Experts. Song, but it's in French. So here's the backstory. Every once in a while, I'll run across a song that I'm intrigued by. I was watching a movie uh, a couple of weeks ago. It was out, I think, in 2018 called A Simple Plan with Anna Kendrick. And it was an okay movie. But interestingly enough, today I just saw in the Hollywood trade publications that they um, greenlit a sequel. But this was the song that was played on the end credit sequence of the movie. And I just thought it was a cool song, even though it's in French. Huh. And I think that it's a it's a French pop song from the 1960s called Les Tombes les Filles, and it was a hit in the 1960s, I think 1964. And these are American women who did this. No Small Children is the name of the uh, the group, and the video is fantastic. There's lots of really cool horns in here, so I'm going to go out with this after we wrap up our Sue's News segment. Anyway, just something a little different there. Mm. We don't often, you know, I guess maybe April Wine brings this into um, French-Canadian language, but we don't really have a lot of bumps that have any other languages. Not that we discriminate here. You no, know, of course not. Not, no. not on this show. We're but, a melting no. pot. Yes, thank, thank you, you Fred. Fred. The Hall of Famer points that out for mm-hmm. sure. Absolutely. Hey, look who's a... I'm over there, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Thank you, Kenny. Uh, <laughs> Alex Rich in the studio with us. How are we doing? Well, we're doing okay. I do have some questions for you. Alex and I got together this morning. He came out to my home to help spread some mulch because Cotton's Ace Hardware delivered some stuff yeah. with the uh, the four step. And I may have earlier on the show leaked information about how you applied the fertilizer in your backyard. I may have. I can't remember if I some, did or not. You just got to focus on on, on my how stuff? you're applying. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, read the directions is an important is, is thing it, when you do the four Would it be way steps. off the mark to say that there's four steps, so you do them in order, right? One, bag one, and then step two. Like, they're pretty easily labeled, right? Which is a genius idea. It is. It's crazy. It's probably mm-hmm. simplified. But, but then, key is, is it possible? attention. Right. So yeah. is it possible that somebody in the room did not pay attention huh. and may have gone to step two before step one? Let's might see. Have. Let's I mean, see. I, I might, might have gotten a little eager. <laughs> I might have gotten a little eager. So there was a crime summit today uh, that they did. I, I think it was downtown here, East West Gateway, put it on. Steve Elman from St. Charles County was there. And I know that he's taken some issues with the city's approach to combating some of this crime. So Which we have is some... to say they don't do anything. Thank you, Sue. Yes. Thank you for confirming that. So Elman and Tish have kind of gone back and forth here quite a bit in the last couple of years, and I like the way that Steve handles himself. And yes. I understand. Now, I've not heard this yet, Fred. You've heard this? I have heard it. Okay. And they were discussing, uh, I guess it was an amendment that um, Steve Elman had that tied staffing levels of St. Louis City Police uh, to hiring social workers. Because they want to give criminals a hug. That's yeah, what Tish and that's the crew, they do. want to give criminals a hug. They don't want to arrest them and put them in jail. They want to you know, just let them loose on right. the street so they can keep repeating. So this was the exchange. Just simply says, uh, if you want to hire a social worker, you need to hire 10 cops first. I my question. Love that. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I draw the 
lie because I, you can no longer make no more mandate what we do in the city of St. Louis's police department, no more than I can no. mandate what you do in St. Charles. This mandates a group on no, hiring. No, you said hire the people. city of St. Louis must no, no. hire 10 no. new police no. officers no. before a social worker or additional no. social workers are hired by the collaborative. It doesn't say that. It yep. says the collaborative can hire a social worker until the city decides and does hire 10 We are hiring. No, you cannot mandate too. that we hire. We're not mandating. We're, We're not. Just saying you are mandate. Must. Must is a mandate, Steve. So, you know what? I've sat here and, and, I've, and I've listened to no. all of your amendments, but this one, okay. I'm drawing the line. No, no, no. no. I the really city, need you to withdraw to this. It just says we can't. are hiring officers. So what he's saying is, look, you can hire your social worker, but not before you hire the 10 cops. We're not mandating that you hire the social worker, by the way. But if you hire the social worker, you got to do the 10 cops well, first, right? Mm. So here a little bit. This goes on, I guess, here a little bit. This simply says, uh, if you want to hire a social worker, you need to hire... 10 cops first. <laughs> that sounds like that, the same button. You're just playing okay, the same thing. Am I, am I playing because this? Because he, he... Hang, hang on here. Okay. I want to see if this is the same because... This simply says... Now that's the same. It's two of the same? Yeah. yeah. Well, one's 26 seconds and one is... Uh, hang on. I don't know what happened here, Fred. I really don't. Police department, no more than I can oh. mandate. of St. Louis Collaborative. It doesn't say that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's going on there, but that is... Those are different pieces of audio so maybe i screwed it up anyway we'll we're gonna hope to get steve on the air tomorrow to talk about yeah, this good to that'd be great hour. i'm great I'm so confused as far as how this God. simply says let's we'll see i'll figure it out we are hiring officers we yeah i don't know i don't know what to do sorry i was trying to do that on the fly and that was not working here so that was at east west gateway council in the crime meeting today i know that jane has been um <laughs> voicing her opinion yeah oh this just uh, i gotta do this after sue's news Okay, and I'm going to need Abby's help on this. This just reminded me of something because I was thinking about Duker, you know, in her fast, furious hands. You know, the this Alex, this is good for you too, and I'm going to tease it this way because this this one caught me off guard as an old dude a couple years ago, but it's been a few years, and I use it now because I like it. So if you're trying to do some sort of confirmation, and you want to say how do I how do I explain this best? You know, the hundred percent thing, yeah. like the the is that an emoji? The technically? icon, the right, I don't yeah. Know. So it's like, how would you use that? Um. I would say yeah, like in the text, in the context you're about to say, like hundred percent, like yeah, yeah right. you, you I really, agree. That's racist. I, that's a race. That's racist. How? Yeah, is that right? Oh, that's what I found out today. I found out that using that hundred percent is racist. How? Well, I'm going to explain after Sue's mm. news, and you're going to have to just kind of stick around and find out. These allegations are deeply concerning. Does the president have any comment? We're not going to comment. It's not clear messaging. No, 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 no. And now, Sue's News, sponsored by Mr. Appliance, speedy expert service, MrAppliance.com. Well, I couldn't cut into your time. No, so. you really couldn't. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> On this day in history, this has a little bit of music. I don't know how we're doing over there. We're doing all right. Oh, I can play we? Steve Ellman one more time. If no, you want that's me to. okay. Here, here's the music. Oh, okay. This simply says, <laughs> <laughs> "Is it this?" Take it. That's it. On this day in history, 230 years ago, in 1794, President George Washington authorized the creation of the U.S. Navy. I love it. So, congratulations, uh, anybody who's been in the Navy. It is 230 years old today. My cousin's kids are in the Navy. What, what's your cousin's kids, Fred? What is that to you? Your second cousin oh, or your first one? I think what? it's second. Yeah. Second cousin? Is it second cousin or is it like a removed thing? I'm not sure. Cousins once removed? I don't, I don't know. know. I don't even know what I don't that even means. I just like to use it. I like yeah. to throw that in every once in a while <laughs> even though I don't know what it means. <laughs> It's like uh, my twice uncle Gary, yeah, twice removed. <laughs> oh, that's funny. My uncle Gary was in the Navy, and his grandchildren were out. But that's an easier way to say it. And on this day in history, just 40 years ago, which is um, in 1984, if we're doing the math, the Scorpions released their ninth album. Well, wow, this of is course. quite a transition. Yes, it is. Oh yeah. Ah, that was around about the time that I uh, saw the Scorpions, the one and only time. Keel Auditorium. Oh, that's what that's with right. Iron Maiden. And there was Iron somebody Maiden, else that was dang. on that bill, too. I can't remember who it was, but that was a wow. damn good show. Yeah, wow. Iron Maiden, Scorpions, somebody else. Scorpions, about that. Uh, of course, are German. So sometimes when you try to listen to the lyrics, you say, wait, what? what? 
But uh, yeah, that's uh, that was forty years ago. They were today. always a little bit too hard. For yeah, they're like, well, Iron Maiden aggressive. for heaven's sake. See, uh, the Scorpions are Rudolph Shanker. You will often hear on this program on the Mark Reardon bumper show and uh, bumper music. You'll hear UFO, a band from uh, England, and they were for the longest time, and then he dropped out of the band. Michael Shanker, his brother, was the guitarist for UFO. So oh, the okay. Shanker brothers, if oh, you that's will. Nice. Yes. A little musical history there. According, by the way, to an article in Billboard, streaming musical services accounted for about 83% of U.S. recorded music business last year. And, of course, that's up. It just continues to go up. There are now about 96 million paid subscribers to any kind of music streaming service. What's your service of choice, Alex? You know, people give me trouble all the time. I'm an Apple Music guy. I am. I just That's I right. like Apple Music. I don't know. I've never gotten That's into That's like the Spotify only one I don't and... have anymore. Really? I used to. Fred, we use? A strictly Spotify. Yeah. Abby? I'm Spotify as well. Sue? Spotify. Now, Why what am they... I missing out on? What am I, like, you know, I people tell me there's better playlists and do you whatnot pay, on. Do you pay for Spotify? I do. Yeah. Okay. My Fred, family does. Yeah, we have the family okay. plan. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. I do. So I use Tidal. I, I'm a, a elitist, and I use a service called Tidal because they have high-resolution music, and I think I'm fancy. Yeah, you do. And that's why I use it. <laughs> yeah. But I do. I love the format of title. I really do. It's that's T-I-D-A-L. Fun. Oh, and, like the wave. Yeah. But okay. it's it's Jay-Z and Jimmy Iovine who came up with, um, well, actually, Jimmy Iovine, I don't think, was involved in that. But uh, J- that was Jay-Z who Can came I up ask, with Can I answer title. the question now? <laughs> I think what he, it does great mixes for you, Alex, and it'll give you all kinds of different options you can do. And you can find any obscure craziness on there. Mm. But yes. maybe I, Apple I, Music I, does as well. But nah, I just I've thought about know. taking a dive, but maybe this will be the year. I can't. So I have a, also a, I use um, Amazon Music because of the Alexa service. Because my daughter mainly, we we don't have my daughter's name is Alexa, so we can't have it everywhere. But in my car and on my son's speakers, I can use the word Alexa and tell them what to play. So we have Amazon Music for that, and I also have a service called. Quobuzz, which is another high res service. Again, just because I think. Why I'm fancy. do you need that? that ah, ain't, you know, that it's kind of doing to mess around with music services. That's all. Okay. Wow. I anyway. have my reasons, Sue. Uh huh. <laughs> do you like to spend too much money? That might be it. That is. Plus, it. I'm an elitist. Did I mention that? Oh, that's right. Okay, that's fair. I love this. Pizza Hut is running a twelve dollar pizza promotion for the big eclipse next month, and they're calling it Total Eclipse of the Hut. Oh, I love, love it. That. I love it. Now, maybe I'm crazy, but $12 doesn't seem like a huge deal. Well, pizza's expensive now. Yeah, but you can go yeah. to, like, some of these yeah. places have, like, you know, unbelievable well, yeah. two medium pizzas for and, 10 bucks right. or something, That's right? That's with good reason. I've been kind of going the take-and-bake route from oh, Schnucks Oh, look at lately. you. I like, I like that. Pa- Papa Murphy's take-and-bake pretty good, too. You ever do that? Uh, uh, no. Oh, chicken pesto, Papa Murphy's. That's really good. I because do like then pesto. You, they create it for you and then you go home and you put it in the oven. But the, they, you know, up where they have all the vegetables and all that stuff, they have the uh, take and bake from Schnooks. And they're only like eight bucks and they're pretty decent. Well, that's not what they are. It's better than the, the frozen ones. All right. Well, that's And fair. you can freeze those too. Are, are we all going upstairs to the eclipse on the 8th? I think we and have are, to. We, are you mm-hmm. going, Fred? Oh, it's a must. I didn't know about didn't it. Didn't you get I mean, that I know about email? The eclipse. There was yeah. an email that went there was out. There's an email, Fred. Fred. Email? I did. I did. Okay. Was it on the work email? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't read oh, those. Shoot. You guys know that. <laughs> but well, I, I would go up there even if there wasn't something organized for you. All right. Can I plead yeah, some ignorance here? Can yes. I, can I, I'm just going to do it because uh, why not? I, I know there's some sort of eclipse coming up, yeah. mainly because you just told me, but I've also seen some other things on the interwebs, right? I have no idea. This is another solar eclipse? Yes. Okay. Partial? We are not in the path of totality. Okay. All right. But we will see a pretty good one. Okay. So we are all invited up. It starts in the... I think the party upstairs, I think the best time is 1.45 to 2.15, but you have to have glasses. The glasses. I was just going to ask. And I just ordered six of them on Amazon. So I got the eighth of April? So, yeah. So I've got the, f- f- the five a, of us covered. It was a six-pack? Yeah, it's a six-pack. Yeah. yeah. So we're covered. All we have to do is run upstairs and watch the thing. Mark, All do right. you remember our live remote of show course. during we had the a great last time. big one? We Jane JD, was there. We did a broadcast at Jefferson JD Barracks. Oh, that's yeah. cool. That was a big watch spot, wasn't mm-hmm. it? Yeah, yeah, it was. It was hot that day, wasn't it? Oh, it was oh, bitter. Oh, brutal. I was so happy when brutal. the sun went away. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. We uh, Buffalo, for some reason, is in the, well, I don't know, for some reason, nature's reason, is in the path of totality, but we only get a little piece. All right, the online gambling site bet usa is looking to hire a wiener connoisseur not to that kind 
This is to visit all 30 major league ballparks and check the hot dogs at each one. You get to taste test dozens of hot dogs, but uh, they're really just wanting to know who's going to serve the biggest hot dog in the MLB. So that's what you're doing. Once you get your hands on one, you have to measure it. It's not a full-time gig. They buy you game tickets. They buy you travel. You get $2,500. They're going to also toss in a $500 gift card for the MLBshop.com and a subscription to MLB TV. I thought, well, maybe Mark will do that. Fred, that's yeah. a deal. Oh, I, you I, might I'm, be interested. I like this. Uh, you could apply on their website between now and April 18th. Just enter Sounds your name and email, and uh, then you got to write a short pitch for why you're the most qualified person. But, yeah. Then you could do it. I'd take the gig. I do right? in a heartbeat. Yeah. I would too. I think it Absolutely. sounds awesome. Now, while I'm on the food theme, a Star Wars brand blue milk is hitting stores on April 17th. I'm doing it now so Jane doesn't hear and we have to drink it. It's all <laughs> Thanks, part of Lucasfilm's. Yes, it's a part of Lucasfilm's celebration of Star Wars Day on May the 4th, but they're wow. letting you know in advance. Blue milk is only in one scene in the Star Wars movies, and it's the original, the 1977, when Luke is talking to his aunt and uncle. He must drink a glass of uh, blue. Do you remember this, Abby? I do. I, I was wondering if it wasn't in the pre or the, the sequels, too. He oh. drinks something like They say it was in only that one, too. Interesting. Yeah. Maybe huh. I'm wrong. Fred, save some for the rest of us, will you? Yeah, come on. <laughs> Fred, ooh, you could drink I've, blue milk in the car. I'd kick the habit. Have you? Okay, that's yeah. right. Hey, before <laughs> random fact, I have a, an audible. Okay. Just, just give me a window. Uh, this vanilla-flavored milk, by the way, is blue food. All right, I'll get go right now. Um, ask me about Carol Burnett. What's up with Carol Burnett? Well, I'm Mark. so glad that you asked, Sue, uh-huh. because I know that you're a fan. It, what, that was a really Thanks. good lead. Yeah. I don't know how well, you did yeah. that. She's yeah. a professional, it's ladies a and gentlemen. It's a <laughs> gift. She's on last night, and this was kind of a funny moment. With uh, Was this with Fallon or Kimmel? I can't remember. Uh, ah, it doesn't matter. They're all kind of the same these days, but here it is. I loved hearing your stories, and you said something very funny that, is there something you wanted to do that you haven't done, that you haven't yet. done yet by the time, by before you turn 90. Okay, this is neither of them. It's like Who Kelly, it's Kelly and her, yeah. Kelly and her husband. Like it, Kelly yeah. Rippa, right? Is it Kelly's husband? I, I don't know. I don't know. Some dude that's is, working with it's Kelly. That show, it's Kelly. Mark Consuelo. Steve Elman? Sure. Who's Mark yeah, Consuelo? Mark. That's her husband. That's Kelly's husband. <laughs> oh, yeah, my no. gosh. Wait, I'm so confused. But Mark Consuelo, who's that? That's her husband. Well, that's oh. who I think it is. Okay, okay. let me All start right. this Let's whole thing over. Let's try it again. Like okay. I said, it was not on, this was not here. on fa- yeah, Fallon. It was on this, a show. It was okay. on a show. Thank you. I loved hearing your stories. And you said something very funny that, is there something you wanted to do that you haven't done you haven't done yet? By the time, by before you turn ninety, yeah. and you said George Clooney. Right. <laughs> As I, has George reached out? No, 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 but now I'm thinking about Bradley Cooper. <laughs> That's kind of cute, I although it's it very great. Betty White. It's almost like she's yeah, taking right. over yeah. for Betty. You yeah. know? <laughs> I do love her so much, and, you know, I, I have these some of my fondest memories of my grandparents, and my grandparents died when I was, my grandma died when I was, um, when I turned 18, it was on my 18th birthday, and my grandfather died when I was 12, I think, and I was very close. They helped raise me because Aww. I um, I did not know, I don't know my biological father, so the first couple years of my life, I lived with my grandma and grandpa, and when I was, I remember being, you know, I don't remember when I was five or six, but certainly when I was seven or eight, I wasn't living with them at the time, but I hung out with them a lot and watching the damn Carol Burnett show. It was and a Tim thing. Tim Conway and all that. I mean, yeah. that stuff was damn funny. My yeah, favorite even stuff to me as when a they break up. Trying yeah. to get yes, you, a Fred. Yes. That was yeah. the best part. Such good. Now, Alex and, and Abby, probably that, you know, that's a variety show, Carol Burnett show in the 1970s that those types of shows, well, maybe they do exist a little bit. They tried to do a little resurgency of those on some of the networks, but it was just one of those shows yeah. that I think it was on every Saturday night. It was. If, if I had to it, remember. And it was live, right? That was the other thing that was... Uh, was it? I don't know I don't about, know about that. Live. But if maybe so, it wasn't they, live. they left the breaking up in, and that was great. Sue's News is brought to you by Mr. Appliance. Speedy expert service. Go to MrAppliance.com. Uh, today's random fact is about Instagram. The very first photo ever posted on Instagram was a picture of a golden retriever taken by one of the founders of Instagram, and he posted it in July of what year? What uh, year? Mark Reardon, what year would the first photo have appeared on Instagram? Um, 2009. No. Oh, oh wait, no, wait. 2004. No. Really? The two guesses, no. <laughs> what about you, Alex? I'm going to say... 2002. No. Fred. 2012. Nope. 
2008. 2010. Oh, that you was really close, Mark. No way. So here, 2010. Older than I know. I, I did it in reverse. So here's what happened here. This is how my brain was working. I okay. didn't really uh, care. The first time? <laughs> yeah, we do. The first Keep Instagram going. post that I, you can go to Mark Talk right now. The first post was me actually doing manual labor in my home in the city, which I bought in 2008. So oh. I knew that I had not posted until that time. And then I, my brain worked backward. I thought, no, it was before that, 2004. I should have gone two years yeah. further. Does that make yeah. sense? Uh, no, sure. Darn it's it. fascinating. That's Darn a cute it. story. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> we, okay. don't we don't win anything, Mark. So, you know. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's it for Sue's News. Thank you, Sue. Yeah. And really, I want to compliment you mostly on the uh, the walk into the Carol Burnett bit this afternoon <laughs> because that worked extremely well. Hang on. We're coming back with much more after some more French lyrics on 97.1 FM Talk. I do love this song. Your view of the roads from the Window World Traffic Center. We still have a jam. If you are headed into Illinois tonight, eastbound 6440 is a parking lot. Jefferson all the way across the bridge through the 70 split. And we've got a jam on the Stan Musial Veterans Memorial Bridge as well. Heavy traffic in both directions through the depressed section in front of the arch. So uh, Illinois drivers, it looks like the McKinley is okay. And I don't have any way of knowing whether the uh, other two bridges are fine, but just avoid the poplar and certainly the stand as well. Now, southbound 170, there is an accident north of 6440. Expect a delay behind that. Westbound 40, that jam, Kings Highway, out through McCausland, also slowing at 364. Westbound 70 looks pretty good out of downtown. Some slow-moving traffic, 79 through K. And uh, southbound 270, slow pockets between Page and Gravoy. I will look up the bridges. I just didn't have time here after Sue's news. From the Window World Traffic Center, I'm Sue Thomas. It is 429 at 97.1. St. Louis is home for conservative talk. Brought to you by Ashley Home Store. Hey guys, this Friday and Saturday, Ashley is hosting a 48-hour super sale. For two days, get 25% off your entire purchase, no matter how much you buy. Hurry in. The 48-hour sale is this Friday and Saturday only at Ashley. My friends from Master Cars, Inc., Alex and Gary Rosenberger, father and son team, Granite City, they're going to find you a car. They're back on board with us as sponsors, and they are ready for spring right now. And this is a great story. I've purchased several of my vehicles from Master Cars, Inc., including a, a car for my son. And the model is very simple. If you're looking for a vehicle that's used in great condition, Alex and Gary either have it or they can find it for you. Now, it, it's tougher than it used to be. And they'll be honest with you because the market's changed because of the pandemic, supply chain, et cetera. But Judith, who works here at um, the station and has worked with MasterCars, has a great story as well. She bought a car a few years ago for her daughter, had it shipped to Denver. They can take care of stuff like that. And then she, and this goes back a few months, she says, look, here's what I'm looking for. She wasn't in a rush. If you're not in a rush, that's the best situation. She said she wanted to wait for the one, you know, that was right. He find he finds a Mazda CX-30 Turbo Premier, loaded, mint condition, 22,000 miles. She gets it in 24 hours. It's a beautiful car. I've seen it. So you need someone who can find you cars that are dependent you're going to get great advice. If you're looking for collector cars, they have a 94 Dodge Viper RT10 Roadster that is stunning. It's a Generation 1 Dodge Viper, and they have it right now at Master Cars, Inc. MasterCarsInc.com. Check them out today. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential. But finding those people can be a major hassle, unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. And right now, you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. With ZipRecruiter, one click sends your job to hundreds of top job sites. But more than that, ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies the candidates with the skills you need, sends you a list of great matches to review, then actively invites them to apply for your job. And the results speak for themselves. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. That's right, the first day. 
Now you can focus on your business and let ZipRecruiter do the work finding the best people for you. See for yourself. Experience the ease, efficiency, and power of ZipRecruiter for free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. Outdoor Living Redefined, brought to you by Lakeside Renovation and Design. Your trusted partner in crafting stunning decks, inviting screened rooms, and elegant porch overhangs. Imagine enjoying a crisp morning coffee on your beautifully designed deck or hosting gatherings in a spacious screened room. Lakeside turns your vision into reality. Our skilled craftsmen use top-notch materials to create spaces that stand up to the elements and stand out in style. Elevate your lifestyle with Lakeside's outdoor living expertise. Visit our showroom or call Lakeside Renovation and Design today. Okay, so you filed your taxes this year, but you know you have past IRS issues. And now the IRS letters are coming. Hi, this is Lance Story with the Lance Story Law Firm. Don't ignore those IRS letters. They're important and give you rights and deadlines to defend yourself. Waiting could cause you to lose those rights. Call the Lance Story Law Firm now and let us help you get ahead of the IRS and defend your rights while you still have time. The Lance Story Law Firm is located here in St. Louis, so take the first step and hire a tax resolution attorney. We've made it super easy to schedule your free consultation in person, or you can do a phone call and save travel time. Remember, Remember, IRS problems are legal problems. So before you send money to some out-of-town, high-pressure salesperson, give us a call at the Landstory Law Firm. Call today at 314-260-6120. That's 314-260-6120. Or go visit LanceDRURYLaw.com. The choice of a lawyer is an important decision and should not be based solely upon advertisements. There's a battle right now in our schools, and I'm ready to fight for our children's education. I'm Adriana Kuhn, and I'm running for the Francis Howell School Board. Our schools are being injected with gender ideology, critical race theory, and advanced classes have been removed for the sake of equity. My opponents are endorsed by organizations that push these agendas on our youth. I vow to keep radical ideologies out of our schools. Vote for Adriana Kuhn April 2nd so I can make a difference in your child's life. Paid for by friends of Adriana Kuhn, Kevin Pelkey, Treasurer. Are you the decision maker in your company? Consider this. For the first time in decades, there's a better option for a corporate card and spend management platform. Meet Ramp, the only corporate card and spend management system designed to help you spend less money so you can make more. Most corporate credit cards offer points as incentives, but those points amount to less than their worth in real cash value. Ramp's corporate cards offer you cash back, real money in your pocket. Plus, you control who spends what with each vendor. And Ramp software collects and verifies receipts automatically, which means you'll stop wasteful spending and close your books in hours instead of days. Businesses that use Ramp add up to 5% to their bottom line the first year. If you're a decision maker, adding Ramp could be one of the best decisions you've ever made. And now get $250 when you join Ramp. Just go to ramp.com slash free. Ramp.com slash free. R-A-M-P dot com slash free. Cards issued by Sutton Bank and Celtic Bank members of DIC terms and conditions apply. It's time for a $98 furnace tune-up. This portion of the show is sponsored by our friends at Jerry Kelly Heating and Air Conditioning. How can you lower your taxable income? I'm Taylor Riggs, co-host of The Big Money Show with your Fox Business Tax Tip. Tax loss harvesting is a strategy to lower your taxable income. For example, you can sell an investment at a loss by the end of the year and then deduct that loss from your taxable income. It then reduces your overall taxable income that you would have to pay taxes on, potentially reducing your tax liability. Nerd Wallet says that when losses for a certain year exceed $3,000, the balance can be carried over and deducted on future returns. Watch The Big Money Show weekdays at 1 p.m. Eastern on Fox Business. Taylor Riggs, Fox News. Odyssey.com is a universe of audio, and it's where you can download the app to stream 97.1 FM Talk. The Odyssey app. Download it today and stream anytime from anywhere. Where St. Louis comes to talk. 97.1 FM Talk. Welcome back. It is a Wednesday afternoon in the 4 o'clock hour. We often are graced with the presence of our friend Alex Rich from Y98, who is with us in the studio yeah. this afternoon. I wanted to go over a couple of different things here with you and Sue and the Hall of Famer. And I mentioned this at the beginning. In fact, I saw this reference today on um, the X formerly Twitter. The Anti-Defamation League. You know, some of these groups out there, they like to come off as, this is where I go on my rant against experts, you know, 
The uh, Anti-Defamation League is going to tell you which group is racist and which group is not and which group to watch out for, right? So they have said the the symbol 100%. And this is one of those things that kind of caught me off guard with young people several years ago. Maybe it was even my kids that, you know, turned me on to this. If you react to something that somebody says on Twitter or in a text, you can use, and I think on an iPhone, it says 100%. It's like in red, right? Yeah. So it's, it's essentially sending the signal, hey, I agree with you, right? So the Anti-Defamation League at ADL.org says that that is a hate symbol, the 100%. 100% is shorthand among white supremacists. This is like the stupid OK thing, right, where Gail King at CBS News does a promo for the CBS morning show several years ago, and she does an OK symbol. Well, she's not racist doing that, but if a kid— at uh, where it right. happened here at one of the private schools. Where was it? Some kid was accused of doing the OK symbol in a white supremacist manner. It was just a bunch of nonsense. But in this case, they say that usually they write 100 percent white, but it's shorthand if you just do 100 percent. So anyway, the bottom line is if you use that, for those of you who use that when you send text message or anything, you're racist. I just want you to know that you are a white supremacist and stop it. And if you flash that weird. thing at the same time, you say OK. Double white supremacy. I'd be curious huh. to know the, the the full reasoning behind it. Well, I agree. They're, they're, they have a full reasoning, but the, the full reasoning doesn't apply to the way that everybody else uses it. W- apparently, some of this goes back to um, the way that they use these phrases in prison populations. So you have um, gangs. On the ADL site, they say where peckerwood gangs are common. I don't even know what that is. What's a peckerwood <laughs> gang? It says might want, one might also see 100% peckerwood, 100% featherwood, or 100% wood. All I know is that you can't trust any of these organizations that claim to be looking out for you because it's a bunch of nonsense. Of course. That's my, yeah, that's my point safe. there. All right. We're going to break down this afternoon the new NFL rules on kickoffs, which um, took me about 48 hours to understand, even though it's really simple when you think about it. But do, I, do you need a whiteboard I here? I can't to, wait to for this. I don't think I, I can do. either because I don't get it. All right. <laughs> they voted yesterday. Actually, now I think it goes back two days. Maybe not. Anyway, 29 to 3, the owners voted to adopt the new kickoff format. The bottom line here is they're trying to reduce some of the high-impact collisions, which lead to concussions and more severe injuries. So they, you know, they changed where you get the ball – on a um, you know a fair catch years ago at the kickoff, where you used to get at the twenty, now you get it at the the twenty five, but now they're going to change it dramatically. So here's what's going to happen: the kicker is going to be in exactly the same spot okay. that he always was, the thirty five yard line. Typically, all of his teammates would also be on their own thirty five yard right. line. Let's think they um, all line the right Chiefs. Up. The Chiefs are there; they're kicking off to the forty ers Right, the forty ers are down on their end of the field. And usually the person that is receiving the, the kickoff is, you know, back near the end zone or uh-huh. a couple people back near the end zone. So what's going to happen now is that the kicker will be at his 35-yard line. His teammates will line up on the 40-yard line, but not just five yards away from the kicker on the other side of the what? field across the 50-yard line. Okay? Interesting. Why? Five yards away from the team's blocker. So on the 40-yard line, you will have – the entire team except for the kicker. Bear with me here. On the 35-yard line, you will have the opposing team except for the receiver. Does on that make sense? All or the our, on the kicker's 35? Oh, or my the, God. No. This is getting very, very confusing. No, on the receiver's. Sure. So if the Chiefs are kicking to the 49ers, okay. all of the Chiefs are now at the 40-yard line, and then the 49ers are lined up. Think of them just lined up against one another on a line of scrimmage. Okay. But separated by five yards. Okay. Right? So okay, they're, that they're, helps. It's about the distance that you and I are apart okay. from one another right now. Okay. So the Chiefs are where I am. The 49ers are where you are. The person getting the ball is back behind them, right? Okay. The kicker kicks the ball. Nobody can move until the ball lands in what's called the, um, the uh, landing zone. Now, the landing zone is between... <laughs> Even though this is so simple, it's so complicated. The landing zone is between the 20 and the goal line. Okay. All right? You got that part, yep. right? If that ball lands in that zone, it has to be returned. There's no fair catch. Does that make sense? So they can't let it drop? They can't drop. Well, they can, but it's you could the other team going to grab that because then it's technically a, a free ball. Really? You understand that? Well, wow. yeah, it always is. It's just that that hasn't changed. It's oh, just like oh, you're doing oh, an onside okay. kick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a free ball after 10 yards. So if the ball goes into the end zone, automatic touchback. Automatic touchback, right? If it goes into the landing zone, you got to return it. 
right, or it's a fumble or whatever. If it somehow does not get to the 40-yard line, all right, so the Chiefs kicker, is it Harrison Butker? I know he's the field goal guy. Let's say he kicks off, but somehow he shanks it. It doesn't even get – it's kind of like me hitting the drive on the <laughs> golf course, Alex, and I don't right. get past the ladies' tees. It happens. If it, do, it does. Past the ladies' tees. It, well, that's a golf thing, so wow. you have to know No, I know where they are. That's a sad thing. Well, <laughs> don't you know the rule for that? Yeah, well, it's not There's good. a rule for that. Ask your brother. Okay. So anyway, if that happens, if somehow he shanks it, this is an interesting rule, then the ball is actually spotted at the receiving team's 40-yard line. Does that make sense? So, so just, if, if, yeah. you know, if you somehow screw up your kickoff, well, that is a big benefit for the receiving team because they're going to get the ball at the 40-yard line. Mark, what is the purpose of this? To make it more exciting? Collision. It is, it, both. But it's going to be more exciting because here's what's going to happen. Kickoff returns are back. We have lost the play over the last decade. The kickers have kicked the ball deeper, so yeah. you essentially don't have an opportunity. Now, the kickers can still do that. Yeah. They can still kick to the end zone. If that's the strategy okay. they want, they, they can do that. But now, and you, you have a stat from last season, 22% of kickoffs, just one in five, essentially, were returned at all. You know, Whoa. so they, they all were, were touchbacks. Them way deep. Yeah. Yeah. But even but keep in mind, not only deep, they could do a fair catch. And if you do a fair catch, you would get it at the 25. You could do a fair catch in the landing zone the last 10 years. You know what I mean? Yeah. You could catch the ball at the 15 yard line, fair catch, and then it's spotted at the 25. That's how they've done it. Now you can't do that. You got to catch the ball. If you decide if the kicker kicks it in the landing zone, you have got to return that, or you're just going to have the ball spotted wherever you catch it, and that's going to be a disadvantage. So the reason this makes it interesting is the defending team is on the 40. The receiving team is on the uh, 35. Nobody can move until that ball lands or somebody touches it. So as soon as that happens, you essentially have teams that are five yards away from one another, and then the scrum is on. Okay, instead of coming down 30 or 35 oh. yards at high impact, trying to see what's going to happen then. You won't have the high impact collision. I it's going to be more like a regular play. Okay. Think of a running play or a pass play. It's just that you're not facing off at the line of scrimmage. You're five yards separated. Okay. Do Does like that make it. sense? Okay. I feel like they've needed to, to adjust something with the kickoff. Certainly the extra point thing they did, a couple, what was that last year, a couple of years ago? People are missing extra points now more than ever. So it, it It's did. part of the strategy. Yeah. That's yeah, right. It, because it, they, it changed they, the game for the good in that way. Exactly. So once the returners are running with the ball, it's it's a normal kickoff return. Then it's just like it always has been. Once that player catches the ball and they decide to run with it, and they have to decide to run with it, they could down it. But again, there's going to be an advantage, disadvantage, if you just catch the ball at the 10-yard line, you get the ball at the 10-yard yeah. line. You're smarter to let it go in the end zone, right? Okay. Does any of that make sense? Yeah, actually. Okay. Do we think there's going to be a lot of issues with it? With the players for getting some of the rules. I don't think so because what's happening and what what happened is the Steelers added um, yeah. Patterson yesterday. So they're gonna you're gonna have teams that are gonna adjust the roster based on this rule, the rule, and the rules changes. Look, I think that this is a good thing, and you've seen the college game go in a different direction when it comes to overtime. Um, maybe the NFL goes in that direction to make it a little bit more exciting with overtime because there's always criticism of those rules. Let's think about where we were, Fred, a year ago today. Alex, we all talked about the baseball rules. Mm -hmm. Our friends Joe Arnold and Scott Jennings wrote a piece in the LA Times praising the new rules, promising fans you're going to like these. Joe Arnold, Krabby Joe down in Louisville, came on the air and said, "Ah, ah, ah." I think that was his exact quote. But look, (laughs) we all adjusted very quickly to the new rules, and we kind of liked it in the end, right? All right, somebody is asking, how is an onside kick going to work? That is a good question, isn't it? Yeah, I think an onside kick, hmm. w- that's actually a really good mm-hmm. question. I don't know how. Well. We're going to need to call in an expert. Yeah, we're going to have to get an expert for that. that. It, I mean, it's essentially, Ackerman it's going to be, on. you could still squib the ball, but you're going to. That, I don't know the answer. Okay. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a pause on that, but that is a good question. Darn it. Uh-huh. we got to call Ackerman. <sighs> Thank have you, have. Uh, Well, Robert Ackerman's Sean. on in the next hour. Let me see if I can GTS and come back with some information what, on that what, here in a second. One of my fondest memories as a kid is I had an electric football game. Of course you did, Fred. So did I, by the and, way. And, you, and the kickoff would be cool because you'd stand the players far away and you'd start it. And you'd have 20 seconds till they could yes. meet each other. Yes, in the oh, that's, that's right. right. Now I'd have to do oh, a different thing. Good analogy. All right, hang on. We'll see if we can find out more information. I'm coming back with one more segment. A clear view of the roads from the Window World Traffic Center. 
I think the early word would be the idea of a surprise onside kick is going to be a thing of the past. That, oh. That's what I'm finding because it just it, you wouldn't have the ability to really do it the way that they always have done. But I'll look into it a little bit more here. Fair enough. Uh, accident reported southbound Telegraph just a little bit north of 255. So if you are traveling in that area, be careful. We've got a lot of volume headed into Illinois. If you are eastbound on 6440, I'm talking about a parking lot jam from near Jefferson all the way across the bridge into the 70 split. And that has put extra volume on the Stan Musial Veterans Memorial Bridge. McKinley Bridge looks okay if you want to try that. Accident, southbound 170, a little bit north of 6440, and a jam that goes back through Olive. Now, southbound 270 has slow pockets approaching Olive, down through Gravoy. 55, some slow pockets in the construction zone. And then there was an accident near Bates earlier, and they moved it into the work zone, into the left shoulder. But it left us with a little bit slower than usual traffic. And 70 westbound slowing down, 79 out through K. And 64 out west doesn't look that bad. This report brought to you by the St. Louis Work Zone Awareness 5K. You can join the St. Louis Work Zone Awareness 5K and One Mile Fun Run Saturday, April 20th in Chesterfield. Sign up today at modot.org forward slash ST Lewis. And please buckle up, phone down so we all get home safely. Brought to you by the Missouri Coalition for Roadway Safety. From the Window World Traffic Center, I'm Sue Thomas, 448 at 97.1 St. Louis is home for conservative talk. I do have a very specific more specific answer to the onside kick question. Actually, okay. it gets a little bit more complicated, but we'll explain on the other side of the break. So thank you for that question. Learn to retire in five years or less through real estate investing. Learn how. Learn now. Let Lifestyles Unlimited show you how. Live in St. Louis, two days only. Hilton Frontenac, April 27th and 28th. Go to GiveMeTotalFreedom.com. That's GiveMeTotalFreedom.com. 2023 was a huge year for Banner Construction. 30 years in business. Bill Kopp and Sam P., they started back in... 1993, they have grown each and every year, even had, you know, great growth during the pandemic. And here's what happened there. A lot of people decided they were staying in their homes. If you're staying in your home, you're not going to move. You want to make your home look spectacular with James Hardy Fiber Cement Siding. Beautiful Pella replacement windows. The team at Banner Construction can make it happen. Those are two big companies I just mentioned, James Hardy and Pella. They put their trust and um, a lot of confidence into the team at Banner because Bill and his company has proved it year after year after year, and the customers have been satisfied. And that's one of the things, you know, I was sitting down with these guys a couple of years ago. We were having lunch, and they were telling a story about a James Hardy project that went awry for somebody who was a former Cardinals player, and it wasn't Banner that did the project. This person was calling Banner to say, help me fix it, because you are going to want to go with the best when you're dealing with the best products, and you're not going to get that consistency with other companies. Trust Banner Construction. Find out more today by jumping on the phone, 314-569-1050. It's a free in-home design consultation. The website has all kinds of information for you. You can see some pictures of the products, download a guide about the hardy siding, read a lot about the pedal windows and more at BannerConstruction.com. The choice of a lawyer is an important decision and should not be based solely on advertisements. Past results afford no guarantee of future results. Every case is different and must be judged on its own merits. At Underlaw, we deliver big judgments for the little guy. We've negotiated over $5 billion in settlements. Underlaw takes on the biggest industries and holds them accountable. Accountable. We've won millions for victims of truck accidents, drunk driving crashes, and workers' compensation. Call Under Law, 314 or 618 9 million. That's 314 or 618 9 all zeros. You've listened to 97.1 FM Talk. You've heard of Doug Voss of Voss Financial and Safe Money Radio, as he has been a staple as the financial expert on the station for many years. You can hear him on Safe Money Radio several times a weekend right here on 97.1 FM Talk. And you can talk to Doug Voss directly. Here's his number. Call Doug at 844-676-SAFE. That is 844-676-7233. Doug Voss is a registered representative of securities offered through DH Hill Securities, LLLP, member FINRA and SIPC. I'm embarrassed to say this. I've been using deodorant on my armpits for 30 years, and any time I noticed odor anywhere else, I thought I needed another shower, I wasn't clean, or I felt like there was something 
something wrong with me. And then my gynecologist told me about Lumi. It's a whole body deodorant for pits, feet, and privates that controls odor anywhere and everywhere on your body. Since Lumi, I never have to worry about body odor ever again, anywhere on my body. And that reassurance is worth every penny. There's a special offer for listeners. Use code 300 and get an extra $5 off a Lumi starter pack that comes with a solid stick, cream tube, free product of your choice, and ships free with code 300. L-U-M-E deodorant.com code 300 for an extra $5 off a Lumi starter pack with over 200,000 five-star reviews. I am so sure you're going to love it or return it for free. That's L-U-M-E deodorant.com code 300 for an extra $5 off a Lumi starter pack. L-U-M-E deodorant.com code 300. The Mark Cox Morning Show. Thursday is the Supreme Court ruling on the abortion pill a foregone conclusion. We'll talk it over with Shannon Breen from Fox News Sunday at 820. Weekdays from 5 to 9. The Mark Cox Morning Show. On St. Louis's home for conservative talk. I have answers, and I had every intention. Fred, I, I think you can confirm that when the day started, I said, I want to spend about 45 minutes on the new NFL kickoff <laughs> rules right after <laughs> Sue's news. I didn't know it would be this complicated, and I kind of thought I understood everything. So the onside kick question was a great question. It will no longer be a surprise onside kick because of the way that they're lining up. So there is the possibility to go back to the way that you used to do the surprise onside kick, but it won't be a surprise because you got to tell them that you're doing it and you have to be behind, and it can only happen in the fourth quarter. <laughs> you got all that? Really? It could only happen in the fourth quarter. You can only do it in the fourth quarter. You have to tell the refs that you're doing it because then the configuration of the field will be different wow. than the other So no kickoff. more surprise. Well, and so it's not going to happen. Yeah. I mean, bottom line is it'd be very, very – I mean, maybe a team's going to take a chance because real, realistically it is the only way that you can get the ball back if you're trailing, so maybe they have to do it. But, but Mark – And maybe you wouldn't practice for it. As the as receiving much. team. Oh, I yeah, see what I you don't mean. Know. But what's the purpose there? I mean, uh, 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 injury? I mean, the, I don't understand. What do you mean? Why, I don't understand. But why would question. the onside kick be a, a problem? Because why would they be worried up, about it? Because they got to move them back. Yeah, because oh. the, the, the configuration of the field is completely different. Oh, they're sorry. not they're not lined up the way that they used to be. So here's the other thing about the touchback. If I remember how I said that if the kickoff doesn't make it past the um, the twenty yard line, actually, I think I said well 40, the landing 40. zone. Right, just to be clear here. So if it doesn't make it, I think I said the 40, yeah. but what it is is if it doesn't go past the 20-yard line, then that's considered out of bounds. Then you get it at the 40-yard line, right? Or it says, this is where, or 25 yards from the spot of the kick. So it's a touchback at the 30-yard line if the ball is kicked into the end zone on the fly. Then the receiving team gets a touchback on its own 30. Apparently when they first proposed the change, they said the 35-yard line, but they tweaked it over the weekend. They made it the 30-yard line. It's a touchback. It gets it. Okay, one more level here. Okay. It's a touchback at the twenty-yard line if the ball hits the ground in the landing zone and then rolls into the end zone. Because keep in mind, yeah, there's naturally. no more. There's okay. no fair. There's no fair catches anymore. I'm starting thinking like, about dinner. <laughs> this seems like they're going to have to go to the replay booth. No, quite a bit I maybe think, on the on the. No, kickoff. I don't think so. I think this is going to be very simple. I think it's just hard to explain because we're not used to it. Once. Once everything starts in, you It'll know. It'll become rote. Y- yes. Yeah. I, th- I really is, do think it will. This is how the XFL did their kickoffs, correct? Oh, or does their well, kickoffs. That's now the UFL or, or whatever. Well, that's confusing, it. too. I think you're right. I think that they have something along these lines, yeah. right? Yeah, I think so. I think if you've been to a Battlehawks game, that's. Now, I don't know if they had all the all the different stipulations with right. past the 30 and. To the well, we're going to find out because that season starts here very quickly yeah. in a couple of weeks. Alex, great to see you. Thank you, you for coming well. over to the home and spreading some hey, mulch your, this morning. Your, your yard's looking top notch. Thanks to Chuck at Cotton's Ace Hardware. By the way, go in there, buy the Scott's Four Step, and he'll give you a $20 Cotton's Ace Hardware gift card. Hour number three is coming up. Clear view of the roads from the Window World Traffic Center. Parking lot jam on southbound 170. There is an accident a little bit north of 6440, and that is causing just a major delay. This thing goes back through Olive, so please just know that that's what you're facing. Now, we had an earlier stall reported westbound 70 just past Union in the right lane, 
And uh, things are looking a little bit better through there. It must at least be off to the shoulder. The other major jam is for Illinois drivers. If you are eastbound on 6440, trying to head for the Poplar Street Bridge, wondering what the heck, we have a jam that starts west of Jefferson all the way across the bridge to the 70 split. That put extra volume through the depressed section in both directions in front of the arch and on the Stan Musial Veterans Memorial Bridge. So a lot of traffic through there. You could try the Eads, you know, try something new. Westbound 6440 lines up approaching Kings Highway out through McCausland at Boone's Crossing and then from 364 out through 70. Southbound 270 slow pockets. It's Page though. All the way down through 44. This report brought to you by GHR Contracting. From the Window World Traffic Center, I'm Sue Thomas, 456 at 97.1, St. Louis's home for conservative talk. Not many window companies do egress windows. Egress windows are the opening shoes for emergencies for basements with no doorway exit to the outside. GHRcontracting.com. Get single day installed. GHRcontracting.com. This is a special alert to all Americans who own a vehicle with less than 200,000 miles with an auto warranty about to expire or with no warranty coverage at all. Due to a decline in the economy, CarShield is announcing a low-cost month-to-month vehicle protection plan that is now available to the public to save any driver out-of-pocket expenses on future auto repairs. Call now to find out how you can pay almost nothing for covered auto repairs. Yes, you heard that correctly. Pay almost nothing for covered auto repairs. An open phone line has been established for all drivers to call for a free quick quote. Call 800-652-5241 now. Drivers who are covered will not have to pay for covered repairs again. This protection plan is at an all-time low. Additionally, drivers who activate this vehicle protection today will also receive free roadside assistance, free towing, and car rental options at no additional cost. Call us for your free quick quote today. 800-652-5241. That's 800-652-5241. What do you have to lose? Call 800-652-5241. Again, 800-652-5241. Is your home, business, or church looking tired, chalky, or in need of curb appeal? Go Rhino. Tired of painting year after year? Go Rhino. Our unique 3M ceramic technology is perfect for brick, stucco, aluminum steel, color lock masonite, and more. It's backed by our 25-year transferable warranty to not chip, crack, or peel. Great if you're staying, and even better if you're selling. Our ceramic coating allows you to maintain all of your architectural features. The decision to do vinyl will leave your home looking like a plastic moldy box. With Rhino Shield, in 15 years, your home will still have that, wow, it looks like you just got it painted. We've done large condo complexes, parking garages, pole barns, and commercial strip malls. We code sloped and flat roofs to extend their lives too. Evaluations are free. 877-25-RHINO or 877-25-RHINO.com. See what we did there? Genius. Tell them, ladies. Don't paint, don't vino. Go Rhino Shield. Never paint your house again. Rhino Shield. Hi, this is Steve Butts with the Crawford Butts Insurance Agency. I know we're all experiencing sticker shock when you get your insurance premium. Now more than ever, you need an independent insurance agent to find the best value for your family's insurance needs. Crawford Butts, family owned and operated for more than 60 years. Please give us a call at 314-752-2500 or at CrawfordButts.com. The 2024 Cardinals season starts tomorrow in Los Angeles. Our own Tom Ackerman is going to give us a preview. Hopefully it's going to be a hopeful preview coming up in the next hour, 525 plus an audio cut of the day. KFTK FM Florissant from the under law injury lawyers. Get Jim.com studio 971 FM talk always live on the free Odyssey app. A former senator has died. I'm Lisa Lacerra. Former Connecticut Senator Joe Lieberman, who ran for president and was Al Gore's vice presidential pick in the year 2000, has died. In a statement, his family says Lieberman died this afternoon in New York City due to complications from a fall. His beloved wife Hadassah and members of his family were with him as he passed. It goes on to say Senator Lieberman's love of God, his family, and America endured throughout his life of service in the public interest. Joe Lieberman was 82. The Coast Guard has begun efforting to get the cargo ship that crashed into the Key Bridge in Baltimore out of the water. The vessel is stable, but it still has uh, over one and a half million gallons of fuel oil and lube oil on board. And it does have 4,700 cargo containers on board. Coast Guard Vice Admiral Peter Gautier, 56 of those containers have hazardous materials. He says two containers that don't have hazardous materials went overboard and haven't been located.
A California man is sentenced for making threats against public officials. David Allen Carrier sentenced to 11 months in prison, pleading guilty to two counts of making threats against a federal official. According to the Justice Department, in 2021, the 44-year-old from the Bay Area left a message at the office voicemail of then-Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi, threatening to assault her. Months later, calling the U.S. Department of Homeland Security hotline, leaving a message threatening to assault DHS Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. Federal officials say violent threats targeting elected officials also threaten our democratic system, adding anyone who sends politically motivated threats of violence to government officials will be investigated by the FBI and held accountable. Fox's Kristen Goodwin, former President Trump, lashing out on social media at the New York judge who put him under a gag order ahead of his April 15th hush money criminal trial. America is listening to Fox News. Why choose a Sleep Number Smart Bed? Can it keep me warm when I'm cold? Wait, no. I'm always hot. Sleep Number does that. The Climate 360 Smart Bed actively cools or warms up to 13 degrees on either side for your ideal sleep temperature. 94% of Sleep Number smart sleepers report better sleep. J.D. Power ranks Sleep Number number one in customer satisfaction with mattresses purchased in-store. And now save $1,000 on our most popular Sleep Number smart bed and Saturday. For J.D. Power 2023 award information, visit jdpower.com slash awards. To find a store near you, visit sleepnumber.com. Life insurance. Why are you putting it off? Can't afford it? Too much hassle? Think you don't need it? There's lots of excuses for putting off life insurance. But if you weren't there, who would pay the mortgage and other bills? With Ethos, you could be covered in 10 minutes and boom, family protected. Ethos, fast and easy online term life insurance. Up to $2 million in coverage with no medical exam. Some policies as low as a dollar a day. Answer a few health questions and get your free quote at getethos.com. That's getethos.com. Air Comfort Service, heating, cooling, and insulation, weather. Chief Meteorologist Dave Murray. Chilly is the word for all our evening plans with temperatures in the mid-40s for a couple of hours and 30 for the overnight low. Clear and cold, a light frost and freeze again towards morning. Thursday, plenty of sunshine, fast afternoon warm-up, 65, clear and 42. Thursday night, Friday, good Friday, sunny and warmer in the afternoon with a high Friday of 72. This is 97.1 FM Talk, Chief Meteorologist Dave Murray. When you're approaching retirement, there are a lot of questions to answer. Do you have enough money to fund your income for life? How should you claim Social Security? And what's your plan for health care and long-term care? Hi, I'm Eric Robert, Director of Investments with the ClearPath Wealth Management Group at Stiefel and host of On the Money, Saturday mornings at 11 on 97.1 FM Talk. Don't leave your retirement to chance. It's crucial to understand and address relevant risks before you retire. Our team can help you get organized, guide you through critical retirement decisions, and create an investment portfolio designed around your needs. To schedule your free retirement plan consultation, go to clearpathinvesting.com. That's clearpathinvesting.com. Or call us at 636-695-2650. That's clearpathinvesting.com or 636-695-2650. Stiefel Nicholas and Company Incorporated, member SIPC and NYSE. Hey guys, Glover here from my friends at ThrottleNet. So I'm so very proud to have represented the guys at ThrottleNet for all of these years. They are the IT geniuses. George and Mike are the owners. Fantastic guys. They can do all of your IT. They can do a portion of your IT. They have the best Apple support team. Their uh, response time is under two minutes. Think about that, under two minutes. Something goes sideways with your IT, and they are solving your problem and they are solving your problem within two minutes. Now, let's talk about cybersecurity. Most companies in St. Louis don't have cyber liability insurance. You get hit, you're on the hook, you're probably out of business. With ThrottleNet, if we represent you, we protect you. The first $500,000 that someone hits you for, which isn't going to happen, but if it does, we pay it. Half a million dollars, that's what you're covered for with ThrottleNet. Go to ThrottleNet.com slash DGS for all the information. Are you the parent of a 2- to 7-year-old? Listen closely for an exciting free radio offer. By now, you've probably heard of ABC Mouse, the Parents' Choice Award-winning online learning program that's actually changing the lives of early learners everywhere. ABC Mouse is like a little one-on-one -on -one teacher. It has helped her so much. Right now, we're offering a special radio promo to try it free for a month. But you have to go to abcmouse.com radio to claim your free month. 
That's abcmouse.com slash radio. Sponsored by Age of Learning. Finding great candidates to hire can be like, well, trying to find a needle in a haystack, but not with ZipRecruiter. Its powerful technology actively finds and invites qualified candidates to apply to your job. So while other companies might deliver a lot of hay, ZipRecruiter finds you the needle in the haystack. See why four out of five employers who post a job on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. Try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. Hey, it's Mark Reardon. If you're nearing retirement or already retired, call my friends Thomas Helbig and Bob Kershaw with the Retirement Advisory Group. They'll show you how linking to the market is much safer than owning the market for your retirement savings. They're the official financial advisors of my show. Go to RetirementKey.com. Let's listen in on a modern-day marriage proposal. The players lift their smartphones. The young man pledges his true love to the woman of his dreams. She accepts. They exchange kissing emojis. There are some hearts. Very nice. Oh, well, look at this. He's putting his phone down. I don't believe it. He's got a box from Diamonds Direct. Well, now she puts her phone down. Oh, unbelievable. That, folks, shows how special a diamond from Diamonds Direct is. Two people have put their phones down. He slips the Diamonds Direct diamond on her finger. She kisses him. Human contact, ladies and gentlemen. Who knew a Diamonds Direct diamond was capable of revolutionizing the virtual universe? And look at this. Her phone is ringing and she's still looking at her Diamonds Direct diamond. Oh, what's next? Tweets from actual birds? Amazing Things really do happen when you give her a diamond from Diamonds Direct. Come in today and see how we can help you download real emotion. Details, store hours, and more at DiamondsDirect.com. Your love, our passion. Don't miss the Mark Cox Morning Show Spring Bourbon Fling at Clayton Winehouse. April 18th, we'll sample Green River, Redwood Empire, plus Big O Ginger Liqueur, Round Pond Wines, and more. Get your tickets now before they're gone at 971talk.com slash events. This hour of the Mark Reardon Show is sponsored by Gamma Tree Experts. Your trees deserve the best care. Call Gamma Tree Experts. And with that, thank you so much, Mark. Have an amazing, amazing day. Wow. That was KJP hanging up on me earlier today. Did you hear that, Sue? When KJP called the you? show and then I asked her a question and she hung up. No, that's actually Mark Garrison, who's a talk show host in North Carolina, and KJP was on his show yesterday and did not like um, being asked real questions. She didn't like that at all. So huh, she, she in the end, she just hung up on the dude. But we'll get to that. I have an audio cut. They actually have some really, really amazing audio from Vanderbilt University. And this is awesome because there were a bunch of student protesters that were blocking the chancellor's office. And... They actually did the right thing at Vanderbilt. They took care of the police, and they suspended some of the students who were acting like idiots. Huh? They, they, they ordered food for the cops. They ordered oh, Panera. Look at that. They kept the kids from, from eating in the hallways because they weren't supposed to be there in the first place. So Good. I want to offer an example of a university, a rare instance in academia where they may have managed, you know, pro-Hamas terrorists the right way. I'll Ta-da. get to that here in just a little bit. We have Tom Ackerman joining us. I have good news and bad news. The good news is that I am, and I've made this clear, and I don't think it's even you know remotely um, arguable at this point, my predictions in the sports world, and I have evidence of this with my gambling tickets that I make on NFL weekends, horrible, horrible, right? But, man, I've got bad feelings about the Cardinals this year. So the good news is, is that my feelings are usually the opposite. But Tom Ackerman is going to join us, and he's going to give us a hopeful preview of this season that starts in Los Angeles tomorrow. I mean, you just don't know. No. We, we started last season not thinking it was going to be one of the worst in decades, right? No. Uh, I, I look at a lot of predictions, and most people think that, and this could make it fun for the season, that the National League Central is going to be relatively close between the Cubs and the Cardinals and maybe the Brewers as a wild card. And some people think the Reds have something going, too. Oh, that's so. interesting. We'll see. We shall see. True Holden is back with us. He writes on the media for the Free Beacon and some of you might remember last week I, I went over his Hall of Fame post that he blasted out a couple Saturdays ago on the fourth anniversary of 15 Days to Stop the Spread. I uh, invited Drew to come on here and highlight some more of this because I think it is something that people need to remember what happened four years ago and beyond. Drew Holden, congratulations on a lengthy, awesome thread. How are you this evening? 
I'm doing well, Mark. Thanks so much for having me back on the program. And yeah, we're we're four years hence. I can hardly believe it. When you see this, and I retweeted your thread, as I know, um, you know, probably millions of other people did across the country as well. But it is a good reminder of what was going on four years ago. And you make it very clear because I think you even stop yourself to say, look, we get that in the early days of the pandemic, things were a little, you know, um, unclear. And there were a lot of people, in particular old people, who were dying. But then, you know, you get into the summer in particular, June, July, when we're starting to talk about going back to school. I remember this period very well mm-hmm. because I was getting ready to, you know, hold classes for my then kids kindergarten student in my home on Zoom, but yep. there was such nonsense that was being said and, you know, blasted all over the uh, the interwebs, et cetera. You kind of compiled it all in this Hall of Fame thread, didn't you? Well, thank you. Uh, th- thank you for describing it as such, but I did. Yeah, you know, Mark, I think that's a, that's a really good point. You know, we there was so little we knew about the virus back in those early days, but one of the things we did know pretty definitively is that kids didn't face the same risk as adults did. Right. And there were there was all this fear mongering from from Democrats, particularly from voices in the media saying, well, we don't know. We don't know. You know, was, I, I remember that one of the pieces in the thread was an ABC News fact check. And whenever I see fact checks, I look and I think to myself, oh, there's there's this is going to be very fact free. <laughs> yes, uh, and exactly. they, they had they had they had fact checked. Trump and former Secretary of Education Betsy DeVos saying that children get better quicker and said that, oh, we, do, we don't know. It's, it, that's, that's still kind of unclear. There was a New York Times headline from a week later that, that just had that as the headline. It said, children return faster. Not clear why, but we know that it's true. Yeah, so there, there were, as you highlighted, there were so many different things that, and I read through some of these on the air last week for people to be reminded, like the Atlantic calling the reopening, because some of this really started kicking in when you got into the reopening of the states, and Missouri was right. not as restrictive, certainly, as the states on the East Coast and Florida, et cetera. So the headline was, Georgia's Experiment in Human Sacrifice. Georgians are now the largely unwilling um Canaries in an invisible coal mine sent out to find just how many individuals need to lose their job or their life to state work through a plague. That that was that was just one of the samples. And it gets worse after that, I think. I, I think so, too. You know, there was there was a, um, a Washington Post headline that said that states that were reopening were making a deadly mistake. And, you know, one of the, one of the things that always always gets me on these is the editorial choices around the pictures that accompany these graphics. Right. And with this piece, there was a picture of that guy who went to all the beaches in Florida dressed up as the Grim Reaper walking around. <laughs> right. Do you remember that? Yeah, he, oh, yeah. He was like a, an anti-DeSantis guy. And it, and it was incredible, right? It's like they, they really, the, the folks in the media really wanted you to be desperately afraid of all of this. And they really wanted to take any Republican governor who, mind you, this wasn't, this wasn't in March or sorry, this wasn't in, yeah, this wasn't in March. This is in late April in May where you have these states that are finally starting to reopen. It's not right after 15 days to slow the spread. This is a month and a half after all of that. Or or beyond. You have all the, yeah, or, yeah. or exactly, or in a lot of cases, so much further beyond. I can't remember if you had this one. This was one of my favorites, and I just Googled it so I'd have it here because it was one of the most, I, and, and I knew at the time that it was going to be ridiculous. Christine Brennan at USA Today wrote a piece September 16th of 2020 because you remember we're going back into the um, baseball season was was in a weird way taking place, very restricted, no fans. You had college football going on in some conferences, but others were backing off. So this was the headline. Big Ten's decision to play football signals darkest day in the conference's sports. That was the darkest day. That did not age well a day later, 10 days later, six months later, and certainly four years later. It, it was a ridiculous, you know, take, a ridiculous hot take that was embarrassing. A lot of us called it out at the time. But that's the, stu- right. the, the type of fear-mongering that was going on regularly in the legacy media. It was. It was. And, and, you know, Mark, one of the things that I remember I used to do shortly after that period of time was check back in on what the death tolls actually look like in some of these states that reopened. And, you know, I, I remember looking back on it in early 2021, so about a year after the restrictions had lifted, and deaths per 100,000 people in Florida were more than 100 lower, right? It was about 150 in Florida versus about 250 per 100,000 in New York, in Massachusetts, in New Jersey, in Rhode Island, 
right? Like you have all of these states that they, they thought that walking down was going to be the only way to save people, and their death tolls can, were consistently higher than places that did reopen, right? It was it, like there was, there was never any effort to look back and try and reckon with any of these ridiculous uh, predictions that not only didn't come true, but cost people their livelihoods, right? They, they cost kids their schooling. They cost people their health from being cooped up inside. It was, I mean, it was truly horrible. Well, and I, I just wonder if there's any, you know, I, I go to Christine Brennan, but really more so Randy Weingarten and some of these people that, you yes. know, devastated kids, because let's face it, they still won't acknowledge the damage that they've done to this country, to the young people of this country. You know, we, we were, mm-hmm. Drew, you know this. I mean, I'm speaking to the choir here on 97.1 FM Talk. We were, what, giving tickets out to people who wanted to go to the beaches. We were trying to keep people yep. from fresh yep. air. The whole thing. You you still have people, I, every once in a while I see people here in St. Louis wearing masks. There was this poll that came out last week. You see this, that 40% of Democrats, 40% of Democrats still today think we're in a pandemic, that the pandemic is ongoing. How frightening is that? Yeah. It's it's insane, right? And like, and when what I think really terrifies me is all of these. So many of those people polled, they have kids, right? And they're they're raising them in bubbles or not sending them back to school or whatever it is. And you know, I think when we when we step back and look at the pandemic, I wrote a piece back in December of 2020, um, an opinion piece that highlighted some of the things that we knew about what lockdowns would would do to people, right? From a health perspective, from a mental health perspective, for kids in schools. We knew all these things going into all of this. And so the people who are still trying to really kind of lock themselves in a bubble and cling to this kind of mirage of I have safety behind this mask from the whole wide, big, scary world, it's preposterous. And it's really it's continuing to drive so many negative consequences for kids, for the social fabric of our country um, and for individuals own well-being. I want to read, and maybe there's already a book out there like this. Maybe Drew Holden, you can be the guy. There has to be a really brilliant book that is written, I think, about the psychology of all this and how the fear is instilled. Because, look, I don't get, I, I'm not, maybe I'm not smart enough to explain why political ideology makes such a difference in the way that you react to something that happened four years ago in yeah. terms of whether or not it's this, I've always described it as some people think it's this black smoke that's swirling around, like from a cartoon. And mm-hmm. it's just, if you have a part of your mask down or if you're in a bar past 1045 or whatever ridiculous, or if you're yep. six feet apart, not three feet apart, that that thing's going to just come and get you. But there are still people, I think, like Taylor Lorenz and others out there from the Washington Post, they mm-hmm. still think that that's how it works. Yeah, that's right. And, and, you know, every time we see even the tiniest uptick in COVID cases, people are wanting to bring back out the masks and the and the distancing and everything else. You know, there was a wave of pieces when Omicron hit in, in you know, 2022 into 2023 that were telling people about how to find well-fitting masks. This is two to three years after all of this has already come and gone. And you, I think you, you really do, though, the political angle is, I think, an important one because you have people – who really just took leave of their sense of reasonability on so many aspects of their and life. And continue to do so. And, and Drew, it, I don't know if you and I are going to be around if this ever happens again, and it could happen again, but good Lord, if we don't learn some of the lessons from what happened four years ago, I, you know, God help us, right? Yeah, seriously. And Mark, I, I, I fear we won't, right? Like Me there, too. Like there's been no, there, there's been no second guessing any of these predictions from any of these outlets. Well, Drew, thank you so much for the thread. I uh, I certainly appreciated it. I shared it with the audience. We'll we'll share it again here. But thanks for coming on 97.1 FM Talk. Really appreciate it. Good stuff. Pleasure is mine. Thank you so much for having me, Take care. I want to get to um, a couple other things before we talk baseball because I'm so impressed with the officials at Vanderbilt University down in Nashville who took a much different tack than many of our friends in academia when it comes to the pro-terrorist protesters. So you had a bunch of students that did essentially a protest sit-in to boycott the divestment and sanctions movement against Israel. The school actually suspended multiple students. Now, what they say is that there was a school officer that was physically assaulted. And they came on campus. They basically tried to invade as they entered a building under construction and then they just sit down and they're blocking people like, you know, we've, we've seen this take place on freeways and in um, other public areas as well. But listen to the audio here, because this is very impressive. You have now listen to what the students are saying. First of all, they sound like idiots. And there's a black officer that's being harassed here. And the police officers are standing by like puppets. Puppet. Shame on you. Puppet. 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 Even Jack. 
Fake Yeah. <laughs> Who wants to reach not out? You're protecting a terrible not man. Too. I hope you know that. You're protecting a terrible man. And a coward, too. I think they're talking about the chancellor of Vanderbilt, right? Oh terrible my gosh. man. And the majority of the people that are sitting in this protest, some of whom, by the way, I have to point out, have masks on, uh, they're, they're little snot-nosed, yeah. whiny, progressive, spoiled Guilty white kids. That's what they are. A coward, an absolute coward, who is aiding and abetting a actual genocide. 30,000 people are being killed, sir. Show your compassion. Show your morality. What if it was your kids? Would you care? What, what if, I love that, yeah. what if it was your what kids, if your kids, what if it was were, your kids that were you. being raped by thank Hamas you. on October 7th and dragged all over the place thank after you. they parachuted in? Yep. This stuff is just unbelievable. It's nuts. It will be our kids! Your three kids gonna protect you! This is is a job worth it, it, sir? Is a job is worth just, it? <laughs> and your black storms, we're already dealing with this! Dead. Yeah, so this this is where the one the, the black girl starts calling out the African American cops saying, Oh, you should be really ashamed of yourself. You could stand with us right now and be on the right side of history. But you won't. Shame, shame, shame. on you. Shame on you. Shame. 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 All right, so <sighs> at, at this point they, they do the right thing and they send this is awesome. There's cops there, like the guy who's being harassed. They order some Panera for the cops to help out the cops because they're doing their job. Good. They're not letting the food to the kids, and they won't let them pee either because they don't oh, have yeah. the right to be there. Let them pee, let them eat. So they're chanting, let them pee, let them eat. Let them pee, let them eat. Nope. nope. Let's nope. arrest them instead. Let them pee, let them now, here, they called 911. Listen to these snowflakes. Yeah, there's a, currently a female student who's being denied the right to change her tampon. Uh, that has been in for multiple hours, which leads to an increased risk of toxic shock syndrome. So while you're saying, right, so then you should understand. Okay, what you are not hearing, what you are not hearing is that if she stands up to use the restroom to change her tampon, they are threatening arrest. So it is not an option for her. Do you have an emergency? Yes, ma'am, I do. That is an emergency. Uh, no, do you have an emergency? Not your friend that's inside. Do you have an emergency? That is I, my emergency. I, I, yeah, yeah I, don't, emergency. I don't remember the time that I needed to have an emergency personally to call 911 for help. I'm sorry, what? I don't remember a time when it has to be a personal emergency for me to call 911 for help. I am requesting assistance, medical urgent okay, assistance. What I'm telling you, urgent. Okay, so you're telling me your friend in Kirkland needs an ambulance. She needs. Is that what you're telling me? Yeah, that that's essentially exactly. Exact, that, see, that's where the nine one one operator. Does there, this kid get, understand she's calling the police? Apparently not. I need to know there's someone here who's going to go into like toxic. Stuff. And we will take care, but we're going to escort them <laughs> out. Okay, the she, hold on, on, hold on. She leaves the building, and then what happens? If we, if we leave the building, right? Let's take her back to her room and get food. And that's all I can tell you right now. Oh right? my God! I, I mean, oh, she's gonna. gonna no, there's no immediate emergency. We're going to be overly dramatic. We shouldn't be there in the first place. None of this would have happened if you just were, you know, minding your own business on campus yeah. and not trespassing and trying to shut things down, and you would have been fine, right? You want to do your protest on campus and not block offices and, you okay. know, destroy property and assault people that yeah. work for the university? Well, then you can have your freedom of speech. But this crosses the line, yeah. and, and they made it clear at Vanderbilt. Now— I will say this, as impressed as I am with what Vanderbilt did, I just Googled this this afternoon. Of course, the Tennessean and the legacy media, Vanderbilt faces backlash after pulling Israel divestment vote from student ballot. How about an alternative headline? Vanderbilt faces a ton of support from across the country for actually doing the right thing with snot-nosed students. A clear view of the roads from the Window World Traffic Center. Oh, I do like the Bengals. Okay, if you are headed into Illinois, we have heavy traffic today. 
And it, it's lined up on eastbound 6440 from near Jefferson. It actually looks a little bit better than it was, but it's still a jam headed for 70. That put extra volume on the Stan Musial Veterans Memorial Bridge, although that is improving. Brad Range just sent me a photo, and it's slower than usual, but better than it was. And if you are on Route 3 on the Illinois side, southbound is just a parking lot from the bridge to south of Monsanto Avenue, where we've got, that's right, a slow moving train. Now there's an accident reported westbound 6440 near Kings Highway. Some slow moving traffic through there. And then out west it looks a lot better. 70 really isn't bad. And southbound 270 has volume in pockets from Page down through Gravoy. 55 southbound is slow go. And that's mainly south of Arsenal in the construction zone. And eastbound 40 slows right at Big Bend. Things look better on the interbelt after they cleared that accident. From the Window World Traffic Center, I'm Sue Thomas. This report brought to you by Jerry Kelly Heating and Air Conditioning. Brought to you by Ashley Home Store. Hey guys, this Friday and Saturday, Ashley is hosting a 48-hour super sale. For two days, get 25% off your entire purchase, no matter how much you buy. Hurry in. The 48-hour sale is this Friday and Saturday only at Ashley. We had an amazing room. I'm going to tell you that we, you know, the, the crowds for Thomas Helvig's events, depending on time of the year, they, they are, um, they're always full. But last night, we were extra full. We had a big room last night at the Plaza Front at Hilton. It was good to see everyone. I did not get the chance to meet and greet as much as I had hoped because I caught a little traffic on the way there. I blame Sue Thomas for that. She didn't guide me in the right direction. But look, it was great to see people. Mark and Annie and I were all there with Thomas. He took over right around 6.45 after we did a little trivia. And now... Hopefully, those of you in that room last night learned a little bit, maybe had a connection with Thomas. I've told the story before when I've called clients of Thomas's that have been with him for a decade or more. They have shared that the one thing that they regretted is they didn't meet him sooner. So you don't have to make that mistake. You can let them even now. If you missed the meeting last night, we're going to do more, three more still to come this year in 2024. But you can go right into the office by making a personal appointment. They'll give you a free copy of their latest edition book, Your Key to a Worry-Free Retirement. Retirementkey.com. Retirementkey.com. Get into the office today, meet with Thomas, or we'll give you information on another seminar, which I'm guessing, if I'm doing the math right, probably around May, we'll keep you posted. Download the free Upside app and earn real cash back every time you buy gas. Download the free Upside app now and use promo code GIFT for an extra 25 cents per gallon on your first fill-up. That's promo code GIFT. Warmer spring weather is right around the corner, and now is the time to plan your home's exterior renovation project. Banner Construction is booking now for homeowners to be first in line for beautiful James Hardy siding and pillow replacement windows. Beat the price increases and plan your project now. Visit BannerConstruction.com or call 314-569-1050 and get a free in-home design and estimate. 314-569-1050 and have a banner day. Attention business owners stop throwing your hard-earned money away on rent imagine owning your own building and saving thousands every year sound impossible not if you use general steel general steel can help you save thousands by owning your own custom designed building call 1-866-74-STEEL that's 1-866-74-STEEL to see how much money you can save with general steel our buildings come with a 50-year warranty and thousands of companies from fortune 500 corporations to startups have trusted the general with their building needs if you need to expand or start a new business you really need general steel i'm very impressed with general steel everyone's been extremely helpful i'd recommend general steel to anyone looking to build a steel building call 1-866-74-STEEL to find out how quickly your business can move into one of our quick construction kits like a 50 by 100 perfect for the small business owner or a 200 by 450 favorite of the fortune 500 just call 1-866-74-STEEL that's 1-866-74-STEEL I'm Brian Westbrook with Coalition Life. More than 11 years ago, we set out to help women right here in St. Louis. Today, Coalition Life celebrates more than 3,500 clients served and thousands of lives saved since we began this mission with you. Each one is a miracle. Over the years, day in and day out, our team has walked alongside women facing the fear and challenges of an unexpected pregnancy. Through the support of this community, we have given them hope and a path to choose life for the children they carry. Our work at Coalition Life continues, and we need your support more than ever in a post-Roe v. Wade world. Whether you join us as a volunteer, an employee, or a donor, know that you have a special impact to make 
for these precious children. Visit coalitionlife.com to give your vital support while reducing or completely eliminating your state taxes through Missouri's 70% tax credit. Learn more at coalitionlife.com, coalitionlife.com. It's time for a $98 furnace tune-up. And this portion of the show at 5.30 on a Wednesday evening sponsored by Jerry Kelly, Heating and Air Conditioning. Jeff Lynn's ELO is coming to St. Louis, and the Mark Cox Morning Show is giving away tickets. We'd love to send you for free. Listen between 5 and 9 for us to tell you when to call. Twenty-four hours from now, it'll probably be the um, I don't know. I'm going to say bottom of the third inning at this point. Cardinals be leading three or four to nothing. Tom Ackerman, what do you say about that call? You like it? I hope the game's over by now. <laughs> what well, isn't it? Is it a four? Well, maybe I'm wrong about the timing. I thought it was like a four o'clock Central start. Is it's it, a, it? Yeah, it's a three ten game. So hopefully this game is uh, wrapped up and Miles Michaelis fires seven innings of scoreless ball. I like that better. Geo yeah. and Helsley lock it down, and the game ends in a three nothing Cardinals win. How's okay. that sound? I like your plan better. Here's the deal. <laughs> you, you you know me pretty well. We've worked together for a long time. I think you would say it's fair to uh, you know admit that I'm not the most optimistic. I'm not necessarily a glass half full type of guy, <laughs> right? Okay, that might be you know short selling that. I'm so nervous about this season, and I'm not very optimistic. Now I want to hear about the good stuff like Victor Scott and the excitement about that, but. After last season, Tom, and, you know, we're not used to that around here, <laughs> that that abysmal of a season. And with older pitchers coming in, I know there's some hope, and you got guys that are going to probably bounce back. But give me some optimism, Tom. I'm begging you this afternoon. I've never seen a Cardinals team that needs to play a baseball game so badly. This, this offseason has been going on since June. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you're this right. has been the longest stretch of baseball games that don't matter. I mean, it's time to play, yes. and and I totally understand. I mean, it is just fueled on itself, one thing after the other, signings, injuries, fans disgruntled. Um, you know, I get it, but they need to play. I mean, they, they've got to put last year behind them, and the only way to do that is to go out and win. I, I will say a couple of positives about this weekend. Number one, the Dodgers are very distracted. There's a total circus going on. It would have been without the gambling scandal, but now that – uh, Ipe Misahara has been fired and Shohei Otani's interpreter and all the stuff that's surrounding that. that it has to be distracting yeah. for the Dodgers. That said, they have a very powerful lineup. I, I will I will just go series by series. you got to get out of here with a split and then go to San Diego and a manager that probably wants to take your head off and uh, Mike, Mike Schilt, Schilt, yeah. You know, and you go – you go there and, and do what you can against the Padres. And if you can come out of the Dodgers and Padres series with a winning record, let's say they go four and three, that's a huge step forward for the Cardinals. Then you come home and you kind of get settled in. I think that the team basically goes as pitching goes. And the one thing that they have done well here is they have added some durable arms. And Sonny Gray is one of those. I know that Gray has a hamstring injury, but it wasn't his arm. It wasn't his shoulder. It was a hamstring that he said is totally fine. And it's not about, you know, anything other than trying to get out and pitching in games. He doesn't want to be rushed into where he's going to pitch three innings for them. And then they hand it over to the bullpen that, that defeats the whole purpose. Right. They, they've, they brought these pitchers in to go six or seven. They have a lot of pitchers who can go six or seven. There's no doubt about that. Michaelis can do it. Lynn and Gibson can do it. Gibson looked awesome yesterday against the Cubs. Matt certainly can do it, and he's motivated to show that he's going to be durable and dependable. And then they do have this young gun in Zach Thompson that I think people forget about. He was great down the stretch last year. He's only 26. He throws five great pitches. I think that he is going to be a factor here. And then we'll see when Gray comes back if they put Thompson in the bullpen. That makes a very good bullpen even better. They they put John King in the minors because there's a door open for Thompson, I think, as a lefty out of the pen if they wanted, or you know, they could end up having him throw, I guess, at Memphis in the rotation. But my point is they're deep in the bullpen. I think that's a big, big thing. Last year, I know we all point to the starting rotation, but they blew 28 saves yeah, last year. Yeah, significant bad. games, right. Really yeah, even bad. if you had I mean, half of just, those, <laughs> it would make a yeah, difference. Yeah, they'd be right in it. So, you know, and then the other thing is, you know, you will go as your stars go, and they still have two of the best in the business at either corner. Goldschmidt had a quiet spring, but we all know that doesn't matter. As Mike Shannon said, you 
take spring training stats, wad them up, and throw them in the trash, and you get started uh, tomorrow. So Goldschmidt and then Arenado on the other side is very motivated to have a great season. And you mentioned the kids, and I think that we do have to sort of grow with them. Gorman is ahead of the other ones. Gorman could lead them in home runs again if healthy. Walker's a really good player. I think he will have a very good second year. Wynn and and Scott, I think you have to be optimistic, but cautiously optimistic because it is the big leagues and they're going to have to adjust to it. But it is promising. And, you know, I, I left out Wilson Contreras, who last year, guy shows up to Jupiter. Hey, I'm a, I'm not going to participate in the World Baseball Classic. And then uh, where is everybody? I mean, everyone's everyone's at the WBC. So I think he got off to a bad start. And I think that, you know, the kind of get-to-know-you year is over. He seems like he's in a really good place. So I think this team is better than the critics say, but I don't think they're a World Series contender just yet. That might be decided at the trade deadline. You know, this is stating the obvious, and you sort of addressed it, Tom, but getting off to a good start, even if you can go 500 in this first month, even Nolan Arenado and some of these players admitted that it has to, it's human nature, it wears on you when you're not winning, right? They say winning is contagious. The opposite is true as well. So if you can get some confidence early on and get by these injuries and, you know, maybe see some sparks by, I think the fans are excited to see what Victor Scott has to offer right now in center field. We don't want um, Dylan Carlson to be too banged up, but I think there's excitement based on what you've been telling us and some of the other folks from Jupiter. We want to see this kid. Yeah, I feel bad for Dylan because he had a really good spring and, and actually, you know, took an opportunity and ran with it, led them in RBIs, led them in home runs. He looked good. Uh, but, you know, it, it does create an opportunity for Victor Scott. You know, the Cardinals have a leadoff hitter in Brendan Donovan. He gives you a tough at bat. He is terrific. I think there is stability in this Cardinals lineup, one through five. You go, Don, this is how he'll write it up tomorrow. Donovan, Goldschmidt, Gorman, Arenado, Contreras. And that's a really good one through five. But I got to tell you that sometimes if you want to go win and win big, you need unexpected contributions. And to have a speedster in the lineup like Victor Scott, who can create problems on the base paths for the other team, somebody you have to think about all the time, who could beat out a routine grounder, who can steal bases. He sold 94 last year, who can make great plays in the outfield. That's exciting. And, you know, we saw the Reds with Ellie Dela Cruz come out of nowhere and have this phenomenal jolt of electricity for the Reds. Perhaps Scott can provide that. But, again, you know, he, he's only been through double A. So this is a big leap for him. But he has so much speed and ability. It just the stars aligned. And, unfortunately, it was an injury to somebody. But it did create an opportunity for him to show off a little bit in L.A. And that would be Pretty fun to watch. And so how is his defense, and then how would you rate Jordan's glove in right field right now? Because he looked a little shaky, obviously, sometimes last year. Yeah, Walker's definitely a work in progress. Now, he spent all offseason in Jupiter. He bought a home there, worked with a lot of people, including Jose Okendo, and now Willie McGee, of course, works with him on his outfield defense. It's getting better, but he's still an average outfielder at best. Defensively, offensively, I think he's really good. I think he's sort of untapped in terms of the power he can provide. So you live with it. I think in left field, Donovan's a gold glover. So you're fine there. Victor Scott makes this spectacular plays. I mean, he was a gold glove center fielder in the minors. They don't hand those out per, uh, you know, team or, or whatever they handed out throughout the entire minor league system. So he was the best center fielder in all of the minor leagues. I saw him dive and make a play, take a hit away. I saw him go over the wall and take a home run away down in spring training. He will get the jump and make great plays. I have no problem with him playing center field. In fact, he could grow into an elite center fielder, and that's what they're counting on from Scott. So defensively, he is their best center fielder. He's actually their best defensive center fielder right now. Anything else you want to share as we get this season started? I think we're all ready for baseball. And your, your point about how this has really been going on since last June is very well taken, Tom. I think you're right about that because that maybe yeah, that's yeah. why it seems so painful right now. Yeah, and it, you know they were 71 and 91, and Mark, quite honestly, they could have been 61 and 101. I mean, the, the season yeah. was over by the Fourth of July, so they they tossed the season away. They put a, a lot of people on the trading block. They added a bunch of youth, but the two things that jump out at me that this team has to be better. Actually, three. One, they've got to log more innings. We already talked about that. Two, they have to get swing and miss. 
you know, this ground ball team, that stuff's over. I mean, the, the shift, you can't shift anymore. So these ground balls that are sneaking through, you got to end that. And you got to get swing and miss and get strikeouts and get through these innings. Then the third thing to me is stability. You know, I, I like the word flexibility and moving players around, but it's not conducive to winning baseball. You want to write this. Look at all the great Cardinals teams in history. You knew who was going to be in the batting order. You knew who was going to be in the lineup. The Cardinals have to get an established starting lineup and trot them out there every day. And by the way, that's what Ollie Marmel wants. He wants a regular lineup to write every day. So that's what you want to emerge from this team. Cross your fingers that they stay healthy because they already have six people on the IL. What is the Yachty influence right now? It's not there yet, but, you know, he's he's available via phone call for Contreras if he wants. He's available if Ali Marmel wants to. And, by the way, Marmel wanted him part of that staff. Uh, but, you know, Yachty is – transitioning from his playing career he's taking some time with his family of course he has interest in managing and has been has been doing that as well um so i i understand that and you give him all the time that he needs but to know that he's part of this franchise and he's able to advise this team i think give it time and you'll see him become more of a part of what they do but right now you know we did not see him in spring training nor did we expect it does my friend Tom Ackerman, who has become an exceptionally good play-by-play announcer, and I mean that sincerely, you sounding great on these games, going to get to do a little bit more this season? I appreciate that. Well, yeah, I got to do five spring training games on Bally, which was really great. Uh, and I will do the White Sox series May 3rd, 4th, and 5th. And then for that's for the first half of the season. And the second half of the season, I do anticipate doing a few more series and being able to fill in for my pal Chip. So, you know, to get that opportunity has been awesome, not to mention doing some games on radio in spring training was really great sitting in with Clay. So I appreciate that. It has been really a dream come true and a good time I had, that's for sure. Well, listen, let's get it going, Tom. Um, Thank you so much for jumping on here a couple weeks ago. And again, tonight, we'll check in with you from time to time. We're all hoping for some better things, especially to start the season to give us some hope. And uh, let's have fun with it, right? Let's all get a good sleep. Let's get some rest. Let's get up tomorrow and get after it. It's time to get this season started, and it always is a lot of fun. I mean, getting a a new baseball season underway feels good. I know that this team has been frustrating, but, man, do they need to play. Absolutely need to play a game. Going to try to see you at Kegs and Eggs before my show next Thursday. Thank you, Tommy. We'll see you. Thanks, buddy. All right, take care. See you soon. A clear view of the roads from the Window World Traffic Center. This report brought to you by Jerry Kelly Heating and Air Conditioning. Things are improving out there a little bit. Southbound 270, still some slow pockets from, but it's only olive now down through Gravoy, and it's just moderate volume. Westbound 6440, still a slow go near Kings Highway out through McCausland. We've got an accident reported in the middle of all that. Now, if you're headed into Illinois, we still have a jam on the Poplar Street Bridge, but the massive jam back to Jefferson before you even get to the bridge is gone. So there's extra volume there and on the Stan Musial Veterans Memorial Bridge tonight. Southbound Route 3 just jammed, headed for the railroad tracks south of Monsanto Avenue. A slow go on westbound 44, just right in front of the arch. That's the depressed section. And southbound 55, a slow go south of Loughborough, down through Revis Barracks. 70 westbound had some moderate volume at Jennings Station Road, but that's about it. From the Window World Traffic Center, I'm Sue Thomas, 544 at 97.1, St. Louis is home for conservative talk. How's a 10-year light bulb fizzle in five? Double time at home? That could fizzle more than light bulbs, tell them, detective. If it's been a beat since a furnace or AC check, might behoove you to schedule a check-em-up. In case what behooves you actually moves you. Jerry Kelly. 
Audio Cut of the Day. Audio Cut of the Day coming up here in just a couple of moments as we wrap this show. One thing I know for sure about my friends at Banner Construction is they will absolutely afford you an amazing customer service experience. And if that doesn't happen, you come to me and I'll get with Bill Kaufman personally and we'll have a chat. But they have a reputation for great customer service. And that is why you want to go with the best when you're dealing with great products like James Hardy Fiber Cement Siding and Pella Replacement Windows. If you go to the BannerConstruction.com website and this is a company that's been around since 1993 they celebrated 30 years in business last year the website has all kinds of information about these great products on the far right side they have something that is called the blog and if you press the blog you can find out about um james hardy fiber cement signing you can see some hardy siding inspiration color combinations one of the things that's great about that signing is the colors are amazing you look around your neighborhood you're going to see boring plain light vinyl siding that's typically what's put on homes right well let's do something that's going to class up the home make it if you want, bold and vibrant. They have shades that are either contemporary or uh, you want something that's a little bit more cool or, um, you know, not as modern. They have those options as well. The bottom line is, and this is where you use Banner, you can unleash your creativity and really do something special. BannerConstruction.com. Give them a call today. A free in-home design consultation, 314-569-1050. Are you the decision maker in your company? Consider this. For the first time in decades, there's a better option for a corporate card and spend management platform. Meet Ramp, the only corporate card and spend management system designed to help you spend less money so you can make more. Most corporate credit cards offer points as incentives, but those points amount to less than their worth in real cash value. Ramp's corporate cards offer you cash back, real money in your pocket. Plus, you control who spends what with each vendor. And Ramp's software collects and verifies receipts automatically which means you'll stop wasteful spending and close your books in hours instead of days. Businesses that use Ramp add up to 5% to their bottom line the first year. If you're a decision maker, adding Ramp could be one of the best decisions you've ever made. And now get $250 when you join Ramp. Just go to ramp.com slash free. Ramp.com slash free. R-A-M-P dot com slash free. Cards issued by Sutton Bank and Celtic Bank members of DIC terms and conditions apply. Ready to turn your home into a digital racetrack? Buckle up for i3 Broadband's advanced whole home Wi-Fi. Picture this, lightning fast internet in every nook and cranny. No dead zones, no lag, just pure connectivity. Whether you're binge watching in the living room or video calling from the basement. All with no contracts, no hidden fees, just insane speeds. Plus our no risk 30 day money back guarantee. Hit us up at 877-976-0711 or zoom over to i3broadband.com slash SDL. We're local, reliable and turbocharging your internet life. I'm Jim Brennan with McKelvey Homes. Come check out our new LaSalle display in our final phase of Inverness at Brian and Fizey Road in Darden Prairie. We will build to order or select from one of our designer market homes ready to move in at substantial savings, including our luxurious former display home. This professionally decorated ranch is loaded with features and has over $100,000 in savings. Plus, get special financing starting in the fours. Hurry to take advantage of these deals. Visit McKelveyHomes.com today. The Mark Cox Morning Show. Abraham Hamilton III. If gender is fluid, why can it only flow one way? If it's fluid, fluidity is reciprocal, I would imagine. Weekdays from 5 to 9. The Mark Cox Morning Show. On St. Louis's home for conservative talk. Is happening so often that it's, it's incredible, but it's incredible that the United States legacy sports media never, ever oh. reports on it whatsoever. Over the weekend, we had a trans-identified male winning, in other words, a... Um, a man? Yeah, bi- biological male. Mm-hmm. Winning a U.S. women's national weightlifting competition oh, and breaking records. Uh-huh. He beat in, everyone. Yeah. yeah like, go it, figure. Um, Vicky Piper came in first place in the women's 76-kilogram weight category, writing on Instagram that both lifts were competition and personal records. Yeah, because you yeah. blew away yeah. people that you were dominating because of your biological sex. That is so correct. So first place in women's, um, let's see, it was in the, yeah, beat all the other women in his category with a total of 127, 17 ahead of the second place finisher, Krista Dornbush, who is a biological female. But it's just amazing that it keeps happening over and over it's again. Ridiculous. And you have these like fringe media outlets that cover it. And then Riley Gaines blasts it out. Martina Navratilova weighed in on this one. Good. Because she's pissed. Of course right? she so is. So you have one of the biggest tennis stars on the planet from decades ago and still is a pretty significant yeah. name in sports 
Is she ever quoted? You know, and if you would do Martina not. Navratilova ESPN, you wouldn't even find a quote on this topic. It'd be like she doesn't even exist. They completely act like that perspective. It's the most stunning thing to me that sports journalism is the way that they They're are. Cowards. I, I, I don't they understand it whatsoever. Yeah. I, I really don't get it. Um, how about this? And I have an audio cut of the day, but I wanted to feature a couple other things. In Boston, I love this. This is going to happen here, too. So just so you know, this is a good you know preview of St. Louis. Having solved all other problems, the leaders there are demanding 15 billion dollars 15 billion dollars in reparations we are coming as dr king said to get our check organizers from the boston people's reparation commission say they're also following up on their demand on the city of boston for a 15 billion dollar initial payout to begin the process towards repair and reconciliation to the city's black community five billion dollars as initial payment around cash payouts five billion dollars around uh, strengthening our financial institutions, creating a new black bank, uh, $5 billion in terms of uh, addressing issues of uh, the education achievement gap. Yeah, and let's talk about the education achievement gap, and they want to throw $5 billion, because all the other money that they've thrown at it in Boston and St. Louis has worked yeah. so exceptionally well. Um, but again, you know, you have California recommending a reparations board Black residents, because that was the original, you know, let's face it, that was the original Confederate state, wasn't it, California? Mm. I think that was one of the yeah, first. Yeah, oh, for sure. So they they want every <laughs> black resident there, because they were all slaveholders in California, let's face it, $1.2 million each, right? $1.2 million Are each. Are you kidding the, me? The, it's, it's unreal that this is something that gets... See, think about this for a second, okay? What I just said. We just juxtaposed two things. You have a legitimate story in... Men taking over women's sports. Yes. That concerns parents all across the country. Professional athletes like mm -hmm. Martina Navratilova, Riley Gaines, and others, very concerned. Some who are brave enough to speak up, others that aren't because they don't want to get canceled. Mm -hmm. And I, to a certain extent, understand that. That gets zero coverage, right? Right. But reparations, th this nonsense that will never happen, the billions of dollars that they're talking about, that's treated like a legitimate news story in California. <laughs> In St. Louis and yeah. in Boston. It's yeah. it's quite stunning when you think about it. But there you go. That's what we live in. The sports the media world era. won't touch it at all. Nothing. Nothing. Isn't that stunning? Yes. It, I think it is, too. Stand by. Playback ready. Now, the audio cut of the day. Well, you know, we have a Hall of Fame producer here in Fred Bottomer, but he has not landed me KJP for this show, has he? Huh, no. Mark, Mark Garrison is a host at WBT Radio in Charlotte. That's another big talk radio station, legendary uh, talk station across the country. And uh, Mark Garrison got KJP. When I told a number of people that I was talking to you today, it was interesting, though. They all said, would you please just ask her? Does the president have dementia? And so before I move on from that, does he? That Mark, Mark, I can't even believe you're asking me this question. That is a credibly offensive question to ask. But you know uh, people is, ask it. Wait, oh, let me, no, 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 no. You, Mark, you, 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 you took, you're taking us down this rabbit hole. Let me, uh, let me, uh, let me be very clear about this. Uh, for the past several years, the president's physician has laid out very com in a comprehensive way. Okay, so way. she goes on blah, 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 but then it continues. Gas prices and grocery prices then. Big topics here in North Carolina. How does uh, Mr. Biden win votes when people don't have as much disposable income? Look, the president understands. Uh, he grew up in, in a middle-class family, a working-class family in Scranton, Pennsylvania. He gets it. He understands how difficult it is for Americans who are sitting around their kitchen table every month trying to figure out what they're going to pay for. No, he doesn't. No. Let's be clear about no. that. You have to remember when the president walked into this administration, there were multiple crises happening. There was. You have to remember that when the president walked into this administration, he does not remember walking into this administration. I just thought I'd help out a little bit. COVID, there was, uh, the economy was in the tailspin because of the last administration, because of what the, the President Trump left us with. Now you're asking me about gas prices. The president took action on gas prices. Let's not forget Russia's invasion on Ukraine skyrocketed prices of gas. And because the president took action, we see we are in a different place than we okay, were. Wait for it. Wait for it. Here we go. Uh, eggs, milk, uh, seafood products, uh, all the important uh, groceries, those costs have gone down because of what this president has been able to
No, they haven't. I just was at Walmart today. They have not. To do. And, th- and with that, thank you so much, Mark. Have an amazing, amazing day. Wow. Wow. <laughs> she hung up. Wow. <laughs> that was it. it yeah, really- she cannot handle real questions. None of that side can handle any kind of real questions. It's, it's super easy to criticize another host, and I, I don't like to do it very often. And I don't know that he didn't do this, so maybe this is unfair. But, look, I, I would have perhaps, you know, you come come at KJP with a question about dementia, she shoots back. Look, I, I would have had some audio available. I would have had some yeah. evidence of the, the things yeah. and the missteps and the things that keep happening and say, look, uh, Kareen, my dear, I see you in the press room every day. You try to deny this, but the American people see it on a regular basis. Isn't it a legitimate issue for the electorate to talk about? And then she were she goes from there. But, again, I'm just waiting for the Hall of Famer to land me KJP on this show. He's going to do it. Okay. <laughs> no. Click. You know, the sad part about Missouri and our role in presidential races, I'm just, I'm just being honest yeah. here. In 2008, when I was on KMOX, uh, John McCain called my show. because oh Because we, we were in play. Okay, we right. were in play. Bill Clinton called KMOX in the 1990s. Missouri is no longer a purple state. Uh, it doesn't matter. You're not going to get a lot of action from candidates, unfortunately. KJP's not going to be on the show. I know you're all sad. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>